Welcome everyone to Deke Chats. I'm here today with Planetside 2 streamer, critic, well-known figure, Lex. How's it going, Lex? I'm good. I, I don't know what you should call me, but I know that I keep I keep gaining roles in your Discord and I don't I don't know what any of them mean, so it's a slow accrual. The longer you stay, the more colors you get heaped on you. It's a rainbow effect. I'm scared I'm going to have to do some work around here soon if I keep accruing. <laughs> roles. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that. Well, we're definitely here to get some work done today. At least, like, I feel like we have a fun backlog of stuff to talk through. But, um, Lex, I think before we get into some of the very interesting topics we can discuss today, what might be kind of enjoyable and useful, useful for setting a baseline context is... Um, so... <clears throat> I think, let me think of a way to put this. I think for those of us in the planet side community who are acquainted with us, you or me in some way know about what we do, what we've done. Um, it's not immediately obvious how we would be acquainted, you and I, how we would have connected. I am kind of known as the podcast guy. I'm like the, that annoying youth counselor that wants to talk everything out in the community, right? I'm that guy. And you have, are known for clicking heads and ripping people to shreds verbally. I think that's fair to say. Uh, sure, I guess, maybe. <laughs> uh, and, um, but uh, I think it's one of the more interesting things we can, uh, and, but going back, Lex, just thinking, the first time I learned about you was when I was watching Farmers League from afar, back in 2015, 2016. Is that... Did it went through 2016? It's like, I think late 2014, early 2015. -ish. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. So that would have been right when I first got turned on to Planet Side 2. Because before that, I was living overseas, had no gaming PC, and uh, was doing no gaming at all. But um, I saw you in Farmers League. And whenever I saw you on the live servers or anything, um, I, it, it was at that same characterization. Clicking head, tearing to shreds. And later, uh, in the last year, I've come back into Planet Side and have kind of shifted away from someone who's trying to play the game a lot to someone who just talks about all the fucking things. Like I'm a big talker. I started doing the podcast. I had Rel on. I had Commander Sirius on. And you pop back up on my radar when someone told me that you had done a reaction to my podcast with Sirius. And... I understood that it was not a, gen a very generous take at the time. And then later, I had a flick on. Um, and, and then I started hearing from you, and I got the sense from you that you changed your mind about me in some way. Could I ask you yeah, about that? How did that go? Yeah. Am I getting that yeah, that's that right? That's about right, yeah. Because okay. when I, I saw you popped up, and I, as someone who... I appreciate like all this long form stuff that that you actually have access to out there. Like, there's I'm big into movies and all this stuff, so people do like long form. I, I absolutely hate the the ten minute soundbite culture that we live in. So when you have someone who's actually willing to have a discussion that can go, you know, two, three, four hours, I don't mind that. Like that, I kind of get into that. Maybe it's because I have a lot of free time lately. But uh, well, we all did last year. But uh, yeah. yeah. I don't mind that. I think that's better. I think you can actually have a discussion and a conversation. So, so when I saw you pop up with, uh, you know, some of the biggest figures for the game, you know, you have Sirius, Kamikaze, Rel, and all that. I was like, all right, let's let's see what this guy has to say. So, as you said, you had, I think you had it with Sirius first, and we'll probably get into all that stuff. Something like between that. Between, yeah, yeah, something like that. But uh, it felt to me like. Okay, so I had that one, and then you did the one with Aflick, and then as you were yeah. talking with Aflick, uh, your experience with what you did with, uh, you know, Team Fortress and all that, I'm like, hey, this guy, this guy's maybe more like us than, than I thought from the beginning. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, okay, I got it now. So then I, I kind of started hanging around more. Like I, I throw my jabs in every now and then. Like mm -hmm. I thought sometimes that maybe you played to the guests a little bit and try to, you yeah. know. Be a little nice to him and agree with him, but that that's to be expected for the most part. That's why I could never I could never do this. So I'm just kind of always on the attack. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as as I watch more of your stuff, and then 
uh, I found out you you had you were big into WoW, and I've always been a WoW guy. So we had something else to talk about, and then mm-hmm. it just on and on, and then we've gotten into the sports thing. It's just mm-hmm. on and on, and then and just I, I enjoy the conversations. That's all. There it is, conversation. Uh, yeah, what you said earlier about the ten minute sound bites and the problems with it. Um, I'm not sure if I do the long form discussion because I, d- I dislike the short form or because I just can't stop talking. But I, um, I like I like you feel frustration with um, insufficient perspectives on actually complicated issues sometimes. And I, I mean, I, I think I think there is something to be said for. If if you can condense an argument into you know if you can make a really good argument yeah. or make a yeah. point in ten minutes then that that can be a lot more effective than you know I think it's a, there's a saying it's like I didn't have time to write a short letter so I wrote a long one instead uh huh yeah think that, that that means something but most of the stuff like you look at your YouTube thing it's like how how long do people actually watch you know they watch for like five I can to tell ten you. minutes that's average, that's one of the it's whole, about twenty five minutes is what people yeah. on average get through. Yeah, and which is actually not bad. Off. Yeah, and uh, I've made my peace with that. Um, there are certain expedients of the long form that are completely unrelated to the viewer sitting down listening experience. I can get into later, but um, yeah, uh, another way to say I, I really like the way you put it about um, I didn't have time to write a write a short letter, so I wrote a long one. Uh, a saying that I like to repeat is "brevity is the soul of wit." Or being able to say something concisely is actually much more brilliant than stumbling around for three to four hours. It's a lot harder to do. Yeah. And uh, that's part of the reason why I do this is because, like, I got my day job. I got my wife. I got my life. I have a certain amount of time to play games and make content. And I'm always trying to balance these things. So... I guess I could apply exactly what you said to what I'm doing here. I didn't have time to make a short video, so I made a long one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it's just I, like when I would do those reactions to content, I'm yeah. just lazy and don't want to edit. So I just throw the whole thing up there. But I mean, Amen. even now you can you can do the, uh, you know, the timestamps. That's a huge thing. But God, I used to go back through like a four hour thing and put timestamps like, ah, oh, I don't man, know that. it can be brutal. So yeah, in order to do that, I have to go back, put the content on like 1.5 speed, the fastest I can possibly still understand what's being said. I'll listen to the whole thing again. And uh, those nights are, I feel so sorry for myself. <laughs> like <laughs> you I need an be... editor. Like actually pay an editor to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. With my, uh, with my, my, my uh, YouTube salary. I won't go very far, but um yeah, uh, the benefit of the long form, though, for me that I also like, another benefit of it is actually getting to get to know people. Um, if I was just interviewing you for like 20, 30 minutes and to get some sound bites to compress into something really brilliant, like maybe the video would be more interesting to more people, but I would get to know you less. And the connection. I would say no. <laughs> and you would say no. Uh, yeah, and one of the things that you mentioned to me is uh, that you don't accept all these kinds of requests for interviews, but you took mine. So maybe I could ask you why, what made you say yes to me? Uh, th- yeah, this is the first one I think I've, ex- I've accepted. I've, I've been offered, I got offered some last year, mm-hmm. but at, at the time, uh, th- what I had ended up telling the person was that, you know, my, my heart's just not in it right now. Like mm-hmm. I, I can't, I don't necessarily like, I kind of felt apathetic and I, I go through that. I, with with this game in particular, I, I go through those those ups and downs, kind of like the how the population goes. That's kind of how my apathy level for the game will be, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I why I accepted this one. I feel like I don't know. I I just it's it feels safe, you know. I feel like I can come here. Like I I know you a little bit. You know me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think we have more in common than most people would think. Yeah, but and some other stuff that we don't. So it just it just felt like a comfortable thing for me. And I'm not, uh, you know, I've I've talked a lot about like going on and and talking about the game. And sometimes a lot of the times it just feels like I'm wasting my time. You know, okay. Like if I, that's why I don't go on these like these call in shows with people because I'm not going to sit for for thirty minutes, forty minutes, and just and talk into a brick wall, which is mm-hmm. how how it feels or how it seems to me. So. Yeah. I don't know. It's just not worth it. But, but yeah, I like I, I like your format. 
I think you're like the community that you have in the in the channel and everything. It's really, you know, a relaxed atmosphere. Like I feel like I can just have a real discussion, a conversation, person to person, and it's not. I don't have to put on any kind of show or anything, or you know. Yeah, well, that's what I'm here to do: have a conversation. Um, this is in a lot of ways my 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 social contact. So, yeah. So let's talk. Um, you mentioned a few moments ago um, that watching the the AFLIC podcast and hearing my past experience doing some more competitive uh, gaming stuff, you mentioned that you might have thought I was like more like one of us. I wonder who who is us in that uh, that phrasing. Oh, uh, man, us us would have to be. I think people who can appreciate a, a demonstration of, of skill in a video game, like it, mm -hmm. to, to most people outside, like normies, like they don't care about this stuff. If you're just a casual gamer, that's cool and everything. But for people that like, I don't know about you, how you are in, in real life, but f for everything that I've ever done or tried to do, I, th I think if I'm not trying to become the best at whatever that is, I mean, that there's limits to that but if yeah. i'm not trying to become the best at whatever that is uh or or trying to get better then i am completely wasting my time that's just how i feel and i, I don't know I, it feels like with this like so-called you know skilled community we kind of all like cluster together and like, get away from the outside and in planet side mm -hmm. like it's always been this you know, we kind of have to cluster together because you always feel like you're under assault. Like, I don't know what it is about this game, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I just felt like the way you talked about, you know, you've done some competitive stuff and that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, and you appreciate, I don't know, the little tiny things that go into, you know, being a good player or skilled at whatever it is that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely do, man. Um, like a recent example would be my chance to participate in Shockter's uh, Planet Side 2 Speedrunners event, where um, I knew I wasn't going to stack up against the Zyroses of the world. Uh, but you get but an appreciation for world. what what yes. that is and what they have to do, yes. Yeah, I just it, did, it really drove home viscerally just how dominant those players are. And uh, my respect that I already had was that much more enhanced because it's so much... I mean, even if you can become a master of the obvious arts of moving and shooting. There's so much more that goes into it than that. Um, and so many places you can optimize and trim things back and make better decisions. Um, and as you say, Planetside, uh, there's what I am, um, what I kind of perceive as like a, a cultural divide. Um, and it probably is divided into more than two, but I think it might be useful to um, create an abstraction and look at it as, as two different sides of a, a rough philosophy of the game. And I have a lot of, of empathy for players who really care about the individual agency of their impact on the battlefield, their competence, exactly what you said. I'm going to do something. I'm going to try to do it well. And I want to be around people who are also doing the same thing and we can recognize each other for how well we're doing. Because if you're just the best, uh, you know, uh, What's the saying? The, the one-eyed man in the land of the blind. It's like, and this is why over time in these communities, the good best players congregate together. And um, so I think it's natural. And then on the other side um, are players who um, play the game for other reasons. Um, their individual competence is, it's useful for them to be good. Like it's better if they're good than if they're bad, but it doesn't matter as much. And it's not something that they're overly concerned with for for reasons. Um, and I think when it comes to gaming, it's perfectly fine to play games without an intent to be the best. Actually, that's the way I play Planet Side now. Um, by pivoting and focusing on content and podcasting, I've just decided, hey, like this is what I care about being good at now. Being good at the game would be nice. I'll take my, I'll take my nice shots when I get them. But it's not the most important thing. Um, and anyway, I'm, I'm fascinated about this cultural divide and I, I especially really enjoyed watching a back and forth between you and commander Sirius from some years ago um all that all started with his uh 
he was doing like a advanced heavy assault guide and he wanted to take pains to make a value statement to say not not how to play heavy assault well but how to play it morally i think yeah. and uh he wanted to be a good person and play the class yeah right like it's it, it's almost like teaching manners before you teach karate um which it makes sense um i think that the intention is is interesting and valuable um and what he did is is at the time serious is take and i'll let you jump in and uh give me your your kind of narration of what happened um my takeaway was that he was trying to speak to the player with the ambition of being good and and, and give them the right direction they needed to play the game well without taking it out on people who weren't playing to be good. Something like that. And he he um, specifically called you out in that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Incredibly. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it made content. You gotta, you gotta admit that. Now, I think from watching that video, my take on it was um, he might have, I think Sirius had a good point to make. And this is back in 2018. Opinions change. I'm not actually calling out Sirius. Um, even your response video, I know that you've said that you've changed the way you think about some of the things that have been said since then. You know, we all change. No worries. Yeah, but I'll say, I'll, I'll just say that like that video, I, I hate that video that I that I even did that video. I think it's poor a poor quality video. There's no script. I even have that in the description of it. You know, the reaction. This is this is yeah. unscripted. This is not the intent that I want to take the channel in. Uh, just making you know assassination videos on popular planet side creators. It's not necessarily what I wanted to do. But since I was personally called out in that video, I felt like it was. Yeah. I, I'm not just going to sit here and let you do that, especially when you're dead wrong. So. Right, right. So I, I have some notes from the video. Like, here's here's some takeaways I have from the serious video. It is he's wanted to distinguish between farming and skilled play. He says skilled play is when two players of roughly equal skill one v one, which you pointed out in your retort. You can't make you can't guarantee that in Planet Side. It's it's, it's fake. Game. He put a lot of emphasis on the ADR stat, which is the ratio of attacks to defenses on bases, which that's tro another fake stat. Troublesome. <laughs> um. He he suggested that p players who play in a way that are farming centric are actually not useful outside of those farms, and um, I think that maybe there's a discussion to be had there about that that way of playing the game. Um, but again, he pointed his finger at you, which I think is just probably the wrong target. Like Lex, I, I've seen you play, and we've talked about this in the past too, like offline. Uh, you don't take fights for stats from what i've seen and i know I, one of I things can't, i can't even my i have so many numbers in my stats now like moving a stat it, it, i can't do it i can't move my stats anymore like right. the, the amount that i can move stats with play like i have like almost half a million people killed right so yeah. so being able to move stats is almost impossible so when i play now which i'm rarely doing anymore yeah. i look at my you know, KPM, what I'm shooting, like if I'm being able to shoot 40, 40 and what my KPM is. Other than that, I don't care because mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. So 40, 40 being 40% 40 accuracy, 40% headshot ratio, which creates a 1600 IVI, which most people would consider to be very good. Uh, for, as for, I'm, I'm like a 800 sure. IVI player on a good day by comparison. Uh, so yeah, sure. very, very different levels of ability there. But even so, like even at my level, the 800 IVI, I still beat most people. Um, well, and even at, even at my level, I still die to the lowest of the low. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a good. Like, I think I mentioned this in some of my videos. At the end of the day, it's a it's a useful ballpark metric to see, like, you know, what is this player's power versus another player. But it mm -hmm. also, it's skewed. But I think I mentioned that too. You know, it could be some awful, terrible sniper that has 2,500 IVI. Like, it's. Yeah. It's all on how you use it. You have to get the context for everything. Yeah. Yeah, the context is critical. And I, I think the way Sirius wrapped up that video that you then responded to, here, last couple notes I have on it are, he said something very poetic, which is it's seal clubbing, which is, uh, you know, uh, beating up on new players intentionally to inflate your your 
how could you feel? It should be done silently and shamefully. Still waiting to find out what, what filter on the map it is that shows me <laughs> you know, what battle rank people are at, at right. a given fight. Right. Uh, still waiting. And uh, he said that if you do stumble into a group of new players who you, you know, trip over and, and, and kill 15 times, that you should message them and proactively suggest resources so they can get better. I don't know a lot of people in PvP games who necessarily respond very well to getting dominated and then told to, here's a tool to get better, scrub. <laughs> they, tell you, they tell you to shove it up your ass, man. Like, that's how yeah. the most... Like, if I've ever tried to help anyone... You know, and ask them a question. Like they, they're pretty mad. They don't yeah. want to hear it. Um, and then uh, now, actually going through, and I actually rewatched his video and your your response um, to it before we sat down today. And I think, like, maybe this is wrong. Tell me what you think. But you you defended yourself as you should have. You pointed out how all um, a lot of these arguments didn't really apply either in general or to you specifically. Um, I think you made some good points. Um, but here's a, a hypothesis I kind of generated while watching, and um, I wonder if it lands at all, which is that... Cause, and uh, I have to add a little more context, I guess, to float this out there. Because you and I have talked while, you know, I'm just streaming or whatever and complained about... Um, it's about... Let me try to find a way to put this respectfully to everyone. Uh, there are some players who, with some level of skill, who don't play with a lot of risk. Um, and they seem to uh, do things like surfing over pop, which is... Yeah, that's based most, of, most of the players that are considered good players nowadays. They have no, no population ethics whatsoever. They just... Mm -hmm. They don't care. And then if you call them out for it, it destroys their worldview and they get out their why I'm in this pop.txt and they just run down the list. Well, it was an even fight when I got here. And well, I, you know, I don't have the map open and well, I was only here for a second and it's the only fight, bro. Like, I, yeah. I don't, I'm not playing that. I, actually, I think, I think if after I rewatch both your video and series of videos, since I have is that actually you, both of you guys have the same attitude towards that player. And he just thought you were yeah. one, and, and it was no, incorrect. For me, that comes from if if good players in this game are going to have any responsibility, uh, you know, besides outside of making guides for anything, it's it's at the end of the day, it's going to be your responsibility to not play like an absolute shitbag. And I think those people that play in those situations are the lowest of the low because you have the ability to go make a difference at a fight that needs you that's lower population that you are under popped in but mm -hmm. you are choosing instead to go sit and vulture someone and play it play in this manner and that that's that's one of my biggest problems with with the player base in the game nowadays it, it's it's happened historically but it's like you know when i talk to vert when vert comes back and plays the game from time mm -hmm. to time you know he'll do his two three four hour session and then all the time you know, he'll send me a Discord message after. He's like, you know, two things that never change in Planetside is degraded performance and the same losers in Overpop. And that's uh, totally true. <laughs> and why do you think people are attracted to playing that way? What's your perception of it? Uh, my perception of it is that it's super low risk. They have bodies to bait behind. Uh, I don't know. I think they're just lazy. I think at, this, at some point I can understand. I can... I can level with them because going to those fights, those 30%, 40% fights mm -hmm. that are hor horrible, they're very frustrating to fight at, yeah. and it's not fun. So in a sense, I kind of get why they don't do it, but I feel like for me, like I force myself to go to that stuff and probably, you know, it's probably not helped my view on the game because, you know, that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be really easy to just surf pop all day. I mean... Mm -hmm. Sure, I could do it, but I feel like it's just, I feel like it's just scummy. It's just scummy, and you have a greater responsibility than to just sit, you know? The game is already unfun enough for most people, so why are you going to be that guy? Don't be right. that guy. Just right. stop. Yeah, and here's where I think you and Sirius actually have the same message to preach, which is, uh, at least from that video, 
which is if you're going to take the time to be good, you if you're going to take to get good to become powerful in true like you know let's quote Spider Man, you have an obligation to wield it well and wield it morally. Yeah, and I I think we we differ on what morally means, but you can split in, in those hairs. Of, Everyone does it differently, uh, I'm sure. Sure, but yeah, 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 it's we're in agreement for sure. Yeah, you have a responsibility to not not be a loser. And I think that gets lost on a lot of planet side players. Sure, sure. Um, one of the things that you mentioned that I I I have to admit to is like for me sometimes the pop is only something I pay attention to. And you know, um, most people will know this. Most people are well, know planet side really well. But for those who don't, pop is population. Most thing the people usually care about the most when they're when they're deploying into a fight and they're selecting a base to fight at to you know uh, take it to the enemy. Is how how big is the fight? Is, is is there a platoon on each side? Is there half a platoon on each side? Is it two platoons on each side? Um, and what's the relative population balance? Is it fifty fifty? Is it a completely fair fight? Is it sixty forty? Is it, is it one way? Is seventy thirty? Is it really ridiculous? Um, and so surfing over pop is when you deliberately make things easy on yourself by going to places where your faction already has a numerical advantage, and where you can. Uh, soak up the benefit of having uh, lots of bodies around you to attract uh, other enemy crosshairs. Um, which is one thing I've complained about as someone who likes playing Light Assault, uh, the jetpack class. And I'm like, you know, you can get good angles all day, but a good angle ain't got shit on having three or four guys next to you wearing the same colors you wear. Like, just the way it works in a, in a, a completely open game like Planet Side. Um, so yeah, um, I was starting to say that um, I tend to check the population only usually when I'm deploying in. And once I get to a fight, I get kind of lazy. And if it tips in my direction, I just kind of ride it. And I think part of the reason I do that is because unless you're at a certain, you have to be at a certain skill level to make playing solo infantry fun in a game like Planet Side. Um, yeah, I read it requires a lot, a lot of overhead. You you need to know a lot about the game. Like you need to know, really, a lot of it for people is just a feel thing. Like you talk about, yeah. okay, I may go, I may get to a fight and it's a certain pop, but then you, throughout the course of the fight, moving through the base, you're like, okay, this is kind of a fight that I want to be at, but there's also like they're not really getting inside and doing anything. So there's nowhere, nobody for me to kill. So I might leave and go to something else. Like it's mm -hmm. it's a total feel type thing. Whereas a fight numerically might need you there might be nothing for you to do right you to go somewhere else yeah there's a lot to it you know i i read somewhere actually no, i know exactly where i heard this um alex jaffe a guy who works in research at riot games did a talk um on cursed problems in game design and he mentioned this really interesting data point that i haven't tracked down so i'm just gonna assume he's right which is that on average game people feel games are fair when they win two times out of three and if they win fewer than, than two times out of three, then they, they feel the game is unfair. And that two times out of three, if you do it, if you put that in, in kill, kill to death terms, is a is a two KD heavy. Yeah. It Weird. points right to the meme. And strange, isn't it? I think it's 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 perfectly logical. And and I love that it's logical. And maybe the reason if there is like a let's call them a farmer's class right a people who play the game to seek to seek who do things like engage with overpop who do things like don't challenge themselves the way they could um who let them who you know go around seal club when they get a chance um maybe all they're trying to do is chase that feeling of fairness which comes from winning two out of three and like for me, like I'm a, I'm like a lifetime. I, 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 I push, I push myself by working hard. I push myself up from like a 1.5 to a 2 KD on my Emerald character last year, and then now that I've been streaming, it's just all fallen to shit. I'm like, like down to 1.6 or something. That's excuses, man. I see how you play. You just are suicidal. Yes, this is true. <laughs> you this play a true. little bit more carefully. If you play a little bit more carefully, you'd be yeah. Right. But then it would then my heart though, man. I I can't I I can't not not attack. Uh, it's a problem. It's a big problem. <laughs> um, but uh, 
I really, I guess I have a lot of sympathy, I, I, I think, for people who are trying to chase that feeling of, I'm getting what I need out of the game, even if it means straddling up a barrier or straddling uh, a morality that might seem unfair. And I guess I see people who choose not to do that, who choose to say, I'm not going to do what's easy, as interesting. Um, and I wonder why... Why is it that you think that you don't accept an easy fight? Like, wh what is it about you that makes you want to push for the challenge? I guess it has to do with uh, how I came up in the game. Like, when I first started playing the game, I think for almost the first two years of the game, I was, you know, I was in the Enclave, you know? I was a, a Zergling, okay. like everybody else. You, you know? have a Zergling I was, story, too. That, of that makes course. Me I mean, everybody everybody does, right? Yeah. Yeah. We all we all started somewhere. Yeah. So I mean, I wasn't particularly you know great at FPS games at that point. I was I could you know in Battlefield games in this game I get like a two KD that was good for me. Uh, but then I fell into a community. I guess what I to get into it more specifically when I when I met Visigoto, right? I don't know if if you know who that is or yeah, not. Yeah. But, He's an AC. Uh, it, w yes. None of, not really many of them are playing anymore, and I get I'm it. not even. He doesn't even play games anymore. But at the time, okay, uh, he he started having YouTube. He had YouTube videos up and everything. He wasn't streaming or anything. But the way that he that I saw that he killed people was the the cleanest. I didn't kill people this way. I mag dumped dicks. You know, that was the normal, the normal bad accuracy. Mag -dumped Never headshotted anybody. Yeah, it was. It was crazy to me, but when I watched him play, it was like the cleanest I had ever seen anybody kill anyone in the game. I was like, wow. So, you know, I'm, I'm a curious guy. So I would, you know, when I saw him in game, not, I didn't go out of my way, but I would, I would whisper and be like, ask him about like mouse type of stuff, graphics, settings, all that stuff that sure. you would normally ask them on. And so we got to talking and he was receptive to that we became friends and then I, I joined the outfit. Right. So, uh, the thing about AC was it wasn't a really big outfit until like, I don't know, much, much later, like 2016 or so when we had a lot of nut hangers, you know, people who just wanted to, to hang around the successful good players and they were there, they, ah, they were yes. in the outfit just to be like, I, I always hated those people, but you just accepted them and endured them. Like gaming uh, groupies. Yeah. I hate them. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. They're just annoying. <laughs> they don't offer anything. Um, but yeah, it was a smaller outfit, so we never had we never had like a platoon sized element to go and bludgeon people with. You know, we had we had the scalpel, right? We mm -hmm. had twelve people, maybe eight, nine, ten people on. So in order to effectively fight what we were fighting, you had to to have some floor of ability to be able to kill like three or four guys for every one guy that you know they killed of us mm -hmm. so that that whole thing and to do that you had to learn how to how to kill people and what's the best way to kill people in this game is you have to you know chain headshots it's like really on the head. that's yeah that's that's what you do it's all this alpha damage and you have this bloated uh <laughs> damage multiplier that's you know affected by some things in the game that are my hobby horse but uh-huh talking about uh, nano weave, it, right it makes it really easy mm -hmm. i mean you still have to put in the work uh and get and tr practice and get better and you know there there was the aim training i'm not really much of like an aim trainer guy anymore i'm i'm kind of away f like i don't really believe in that so much anymore maybe if you're like really brand new to pc Okay, uh, and you're coming from console or something. Maybe that's something good, but I think mm. at the end of the day, it's really hard to substitute that for playing in the environment or game that you're going to play in and putting yourself in those situations. So, okay. to get back to putting myself in those situations, one of the best ways that we found, or I found personally, to you know fight multiple targets and and train myself and practice to killing multiple players in a row is to go to these fights where I'm at 20%, I'm like one guy or we're a couple guys versus, you know, 12 to 24. Mm -hmm. I think this, the real sweet spot was 12, 24, like 70% to 80% pop. You go there, now you're training, man. Like you got to, yeah. and if you mess up, you're dead and you're going to lose the base anyway. So, yeah. no, but yeah, that's, it's... that's really where it comes from. Like 
that sort of like mentality of going to when you were actually trying to improve. But notice how I say when I was trying to improve at the game and get better, I wasn't sitting in 60 and 70 percent pop surfing around shooting people and vulturing people. There's mm -hmm. a there's a big difference here. Mm -hmm. So for you, you saw Visigodo clicking heads. You wanted to learn how to do that too. You jumped in and then you made you you seem to switch over to that way of playing. Was that something yeah, that you it was, think it was him? It was him and Nivex. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know who Nivex was, but Nivex yeah. was the, the cyborg robo farmer <laughs> of Emerald. And okay. I, I eventually became friends with him too. And I was like, okay, well, maybe if I can marry the Nivex playstyle with the Visigoto aim, that's that's what I want to be. Uh -huh. Right. I don't know if I ever got there, but Cyborg anyway. Robo Farmer. Hey, he's a machine. The man was a machine. And uh -huh. he played he played three four scope Orion and was just he was cracked out of his mind. You know, he nice. was like and that was back in, in those days, like 2013, 2014, he was killing 200, 250 people per hour. Like that was nuts. That is nuts. Like, no one was no one was doing that. Like as infantry, yeah. like Yeah. That's nuts today. You you do see it happen, but like yeah, that that's pretty remarkable that early on. Um okay, so you started to get good at planet side um maybe we should just continue the story of lex and planet side like um how did it go for you uh did did getting good get, get you something that you needed or something that you wanted did uh, you enjoy the notoriety like where did it go from there uh well as i as i started to improve i guess i i kind of should say i started i w was in like uh the the feeder outfit for DA. Like I was, I was uh -huh. in, you know, DA for a short time. Uh, and I just didn't like, we did something like didn't click because I, I'm, I don't know if you've, you've, you've never played with me in a game, but I can, I can mm -hmm. be a little intense uh, depending <laughs> on what's going on. <laughs> I've seen your but stream. <laughs> it, yeah. It, it didn't, it didn't always click and it didn't really click, uh, with those guys. So, uh -huh. you know, what, it, what could have been, you know? So sure. I, I don't remember if I got kicked or if I left. I, I don't remember. Okay. If I got kicked, I deserved it. But anyway, I ended up joining AC. You know, we're just playing. It was always just logging on and, and shooting guys. It was never mm -hmm. some, you know, we didn't really care about base caps. Like, mm -hmm. not, not until, like, the only time you really care about a base cap back in those days was when you were fighting against an outfit you know that you knew and you hated because you played against them all day every day and then right. they added that thing into the game where the banner for the yeah, outfit came up yeah so that that was when you cared right so i guess uh man that was like 20 early t mid 2014 something like that and mm -hmm. then i guess the idea got got passed around i think it was from actually it got started on in future crew the farmers league type mm. thing mm -hmm. like shock and and tav and all them end up putting it together and you know nobody really knew how it was going to go and if you go back and watch the the first games that farmers league ever had it was it was you know it was b movie type stuff almost uh -huh. you know uh -huh. but we didn't know how it was going to go and we had like the weird outfits you know but there's some notable outfits but more notable was the outfits that never bothered to show up. Uh, uh -huh. You know, you had, yeah. So you had, you had season one of Farmers. It was kind of a cool experiment, uh -huh. except for the end of it, which was uh, extremely regrettable. But at the same time that you had Farmers going on, you had like, you know, my stream was, I think I started streaming in 2014. Mm -hmm. my, my stream was coming up. There's a bunch of other people that were coming up. And there was this like, I don't know. That's another thing we have to get into. There was some some uh, targeted stream sniping mm. and all this kind of harassment and stuff. And it was between it was between AC and recursion. Mm -hmm. And you know, we talked a lot of shit, of course. And apparently, do. if you if you talk enough shit, you can get people to completely drop out of uh, competitive leagues. So there you go. <laughs> That's that was how we won we the first season of Farm. Can we dredge that up? I vaguely remember. Okay, so Farmers League was one of the things that got me really excited about Planet Side, because I played Planet Side one, um, and Planet Side two was not on my radar uh, until I got a gaming PC, like I mentioned. This would have been like late 2014 for me. So it was exactly when Farmers League was starting, and I, I would watch those matches at work. I remember, 
Um, and I remember Recursion dropping out and uh, some big letter from Recursion on Reddit. I remember thinking like, ugh, like this, this, this is, this sounds cowardly. But I, I didn't know I wasn't inside of any of it. Um, can you describe what happened there? I mean, long story short of it, they had a, a guy who... So when I when I say getting stream sniped, I mean there were, you know, four people at a time, mm -hmm. you know, which is it's kind of crazy. Okay. Uh, just f every time you logged on, every time you're on stream, you're just getting, getting followed around. Well, it came out that the person doing it was a recursion guy. Okay. And when he was confronted about it, he was like, oh, well, that was my coworker at work and he was using my computer. And he says he watches your stream and he, he doesn't like you and blah, 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 blah. So we had this thing for a long time. It was like anything that came up, it was like, oh, it was my coworker, you know? So okay. it was all the, it's, the whole story was just stunk and it reeked and it, it got to the point yeah. where, and then in addition to that, you had the whole thing of, okay, you have this team in the league, right? And you have this guy who is just running through everybody, every oh, game he plays. Barum, right? Yes. And he's he's going through walls. He's uh, There's so many gifts. If, if you go around and look, there's Gingerbread <sighs> Man. It's just this man is literally going going through walls. Men's and connection people in with the streets. Stream, I, I remember people in the stream were just like, what is this? Like, what are we watching? <laughs> so I was like, is there some kind of like competitive integrity issue here? I, I don't. At the end of the day, I don't know. Maybe his internet was just horrible and he knew how to use it, but it was it was super it was janky, man. Like yeah. and it was it wasn't yeah, he's a great player and all, but mm -hmm. like that whole thing and then we we had played them uh during the course of the season and it was a really close contested game and we we ended up I had like the famous jump off the side with a med kit baiting for Maxi who ended up getting like three kills off of that play and we ended up winning that game by like I think one or two points. <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was probably the closest game that we had. And it was, it was a hard game. Of course it was on an awful base, but yeah, we ended up winning it. So then the, the playoffs happened and we played DA and I, I had the grudge against DA. So I went off that game mm -hmm. and then, you know, we're, we're slated, I think recursion faced future crew in their semifinal on their side of the bracket. So it was weird. You had this like Emerald on this side and Connery on this side for the semis. And then, it was interesting how that happened, but then you're like, all right, we're going to play recursion in the finals. It was a hard game before, uh, but we, we pulled it out. I think we can do it again. And then they're just like, uh, well, we're taking our ball and going home. I was like, right. well, cool. Why did you? And then that whole threat and everything, like it was just a mess at the time. I was like, you know, you guys shouldn't be allowed to participate in, in any community event from here you should just be blacklisted man because this is you're wasting so much so many people's time like you have to remember at the time too like we had higby was on with people casting yeah. our games and stuff yeah, and they were, we were supposed that. to get some stuff for that and it was just like yeah like and just to get butt hurt and take your ball and go home like it's so cringe like yeah and and you see if you had listened to me in 2014 we would have avoided a whole lot of drama <laughs> later down the road but i mean I don't have much interaction with those guys anymore, sure, or or anything like that. But I mean, yeah, it was just weird. I, we weren't we weren't happy. Yeah, it, basically, it, it it smells a bit wrong. It smells a bit off. And uh, yeah, and then just to say that, I think what Sale ended up putting, and Sale is a sociopath, by the way. Just so you, everybody wants to be friends with him, but he's a weird guy. Uh, you want to put in? You put a. If they were anything like us, we were scrimming probably, you know, maybe th it wasn't a lot, like two hours a night. Okay. Like maybe three nights a week or something like that. So people are putting in the time in. But I mean, to be fair, like on our team, we didn't have much of a strategy. Uh, we weren't really a, a deeply strategic team. We just played like fast and loose. And like, I, I would think they remember that do from watching the games. And my, my impression yeah, was AC the, was like, y'all were just like kind of like, like, like an all star team coming together and yeah, just like dominating it, as opposed to their teams who are much more like relying on cohesion. 
yeah, we didn't we didn't really need it. Like uh. if somebody like everybody, we didn't really have a team captain or anything like when people saw opportunities for stuff, you just called it and you acted on on what happened. It worked really well. It may have had the outside view of like, oh, wow, they're so cohesive and they're well practiced. And it's, it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's nothing like Things that. Things come We're together when you it. when you get the kills. <laughs> yeah, like it just happens. And that's I mean, for us, that's all we needed was like mm -hmm. I would get a pick or so, so somebody gets a pick or two. And that's it. Like mm -hmm. we just we just knew how to play and what to do. And that carried over into the, the second season. But it, go ahead and finish your point on whatever you want to say about the first season, I guess. Oh, I I only wanted to to reflect that as an outsider that the whole recursion pullout seemed weird. Um, I have nothing else to add to it because I have no other valuable perspective, but. Yeah, no, it, um, it, it was fun to watch, it and it was it was a shame to have it fizzle out because it felt like the start of something really cool. Yeah, it would have it would have been nice, you know, you know, we may have ended up going to that game and losing, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it was what it was. It was just the whole thing stunk, and then just just to say that in that letter, like you weren't invested in it, and we're going to focus on live play and all this is it's like, come on, man, just lame. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, and then season two. That was the last season of Farmers League, season two, right? Yeah, season two. Season two happened. Of course, we had a hard time. We we kind of always struggled, had a little bit of a hard time getting people to sign up mm -hmm. or teams to sign up because uh, Planet Side 2 is a, is a safe space for people who have success on live, uh, winning uh, base caps and continents and everything so getting them to participate in, you know where they have to go into an actual environment against real players and 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 win a game it's you know it's it's tough so i i think i was most disappointed in emerald like when we we're getting teams to sign up because mm -hmm. the only other emerald team that signed up was blop so that's okay. edub's team it, it was like edub's good bovines I, some other people i don't remember but that was the only other Emerald team. And this was during a time where everybody on Emerald talked a lot of shit. <laughs> and they were just no-shows. Where are you guys? I don't uh... know where you are. So it's it's so unfortunate that they didn't get to come play. Uh, but yeah, we had to have we had to have an Australian team play. Uh, hmm. Gap. So okay. now now you're playing with a team that has, you know, 300 ping. They're not Ooh. fun to play against. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's better for playing against guys like Connery, but there was no excuse for that. Like there should have been, there should have been enough people from the continental United States to play, but they're, they're, of course they're cowards and don't want to get their skulls beat in against real players. So, mm. but that's what happened. It was the, the AC revenge tour and we won every game and crushed everyone. <laughs> and that was it. And then by the, by the end of it, between the scrimming and the playing of the games, it's just like, you're tired of you're burnt out like That's you, a lot of you work. don't want to play you don't want to play live because the condition of live is terrible which is why we're playing on jaeger in the first place mm -hmm. and then everybody is like i know i don't want to play this game for a month after this last match mm -hmm. like that's that's how everyone on the team felt mm -hmm. and that was just like that's that and then i guess i don't know what i'm still friends with shock now i don't i don't know what ended up happening but there was some i think shock and tav end up splitting up and it just mm -hmm. became I don't know. I floated an idea for like an all draft farmers league type thing that got a lot of attention, but that never really did anything with it. So, you know, sure. Okay. And after, so after farmers league fizzled out, were you still playing the game actively or did you take some time off? What, what was your next step? Uh, still playing the game. Uh, more and more people, I think this would be getting into like late mid to late 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more people. I had a lot of stuff going on in my life personally that was changing for me, and I was about to be. I was moving to Asia. I was going to be in Korea for a year, mm -hmm. uh, in at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. So I played a little bit at, from in Korea, but I had 330 ping to Emerald. Yeah, Which, by the way, all you guys that that say that it sucks to play with 300 ping, well, if you were any good and landed all your shots, you would know that all your shots still count as long as you land them, but they just die, you know, a long time later, even if you die. So, uh, I, I just don't, I don't understand why I can connect with 330 ping to Emerald from, from South Korea. That never made sense to me. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, not enough people to play in a South Korean. This, 
Well, I, if Soltech had been a thing at that time, that would have been mm-hmm. interesting because then I would mm-hmm. be playing over there. Instead, I was having to play Overwatch at the land bar bar party things like the internet with cafe. Korean. Okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so that was interesting. Okay. Um, but this was sort of like at a time where I kind of shifted. I really stopped playing the game a lot, and I started shifting to more about talking about the game. Okay. Uh, Cause I kind of like, I was at a point where it's kind of where I am now. It's like, there's nothing I want to do in the game anymore. I've achieved everything that I want to do. Like I, I don't want for anything in the game except for like a more playable game. Uh, but I thought it was more interesting and I, I better spent my time like talking about stuff more. So mm-hmm. it was complaining. So I think me and me and Vizzy, uh, ended up doing like this really like rudimentary podcast for like four or five episodes. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it's still it's still on SoundCloud. I think somewhere. I gotta search for that. But, but uh, it was basically just two two uh, very angry guys just <laughs> you know talking back and forth for an there. hour. Or so yeah, I I pretty much ran it. I was gonna have some people on. Like I had Vonic. Uh, mm-hmm. was going to come on and all that. And I was going to try to get those people that, you know, I had played with and I had relationships with to come on and talk about stuff. But that never, you know, once again, the planet side apathy of, okay, I, I you get really excited to want to do content for the game. And then you're like, eh, you know, like, I think I talked to you the other week about doing a, a, a yeah. script for a video. And I was like, oh, well, guess what? I haven't touched that since I talked to you about it. So right. it is what it is. Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. To think, to think that I really stopped caring about playing like in 2016 like early 2017 that's looking back now like that was a long time ago yeah yeah so you started doing the commentary and getting your ideas out there and at this point like so i mean you're aware of your reputation at this point yeah would you say that your reputation was the same then that it is now roughly or is it something that kind of came out and got for me started doing content you know i don't i don't know i i can't really say um i'm not i'm not sure which it is i I know there's there's people that hate me of course and there's people that love me and appreciate like the like you would hear all this stuff about you know people hate me whatever blah 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 but the amount of people that i've i've like apparently reached Mm -hmm. you know that come out and dm me or or will show up in a stream like hey thanks man for calling me a shithead i appreciate that it made me think about the way yes this is a thing Uh, i i totally believe it actually yeah that that's a big part of the reason why when when you started uh like uh i saw i saw you in my stream and i was playing planet side and you were like i remember one of the first things that that you said to me that really landed is I, i was complaining about like just I was having a bad time in the game. Like I was just getting 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 wrecked. And As is normal. Yes. And and you said something like Oh, what was it? It's like if you can't find if you can't oh, I know find, what you're saying. If, if you can't find the players to be people, farmed, then you're one of them. Then yes. you're one of them. Yes. But when I heard that though, I, I, I think I felt exactly the same way that person who the people who reached out to you felt. It's like, oh shit. Like that's a truth I needed to hear. Like that's a useful truth, and yeah, like it's, it's uh, it's direct. Um, and not everyone wants to be communicated with that way. Not everyone wants to hear that. Yes. Sound seems yes. Like. Not when you when you challenge people like that. There's there's people who some initially take it well, right, right off the bat. Some uh-huh. are taken aback by it, uh, and you know call you every name under the sun immediately and form that judgment of you and keep it like that. And then there's mm-hmm. other people that do that. But later they're like, oh, wait, they come around, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I always say to people. It's like when they're arguing with me, it's like, don't worry, give it a couple of years, you'll come around. <laughs> and you've seen that happen over time, over the last, I guess, five years. Yeah, whether whether it's in the YouTube comments or like when I made when I made that that first serious video, like a lot, mm-hmm. like the the like to dislike like ratio is <laughs> is funny on that one. Oh. But uh, yep. the amount of people that that have come out after that and like with that type of stuff that are like, you know, thanks. I was kind of trapped in that, 
and it's not to say like the man like these guys do like bad stuff like mm-hmm. bad content because they work really hard and they do some useful content for the game that certainly i'm not ever going to do you know i'm not going to do a a 16 minute weapon review video i, I don't care for that type of stuff like i'm not mm-hmm. going to do the first hour review of, of what you do when you play the game i'm not going to do that stuff yeah. and most most really good players are are not going to touch that stuff but mm-hmm. there are guys like even rel back in the day there are guys that do that and they do a good job of it. And there's a and place for that. You need them. Yes, yeah. of course. But what what you can't you can't do is take someone who teaches you how to play for an hour or the first hour of the game or makes a weapon review and then want to turn them into a, a lead game designer. That's where oh. you lose me. Okay. And that's that's not a shot at anyone. That's for for the community members who spout this stuff, right? There, there's there's a fine line, right? Like I make the analogy a lot of the seventh grader, you know, telling the sixth grader about what to do, right? Or what, what the next grade is like. That's basically what you're doing. But you don't get to be the seventh grader telling the sixth grader what to do and then go to high school and be like, hey, guys, this is how I do it. You know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, uh, yeah, hold on there, bud. I, I guess, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I got to ask you, like just clarifying, when you say a statement like, "Are you are you talking about rel specifically, or are you just making a general statement about what you should tr- what you should hear when you hear people on YouTube talking to you about the game?" I'm not I'm not talking to anyone in particular, but okay. it is it is focused towards that that general group of you're a large content creator. This is the content that you do. Your content is very base. It's very vanilla. You're reading stats off of a sheet. You're telling people what they should spend their certs on in the first hour. There's not really much depth there. Now, granted, some of them do try to get into stuff. They t- they talk about topics with the game in terms of like drama that's going on and all that stuff. But th- you don't get to tell me what skill is or isn't. Sorry. It doesn't work that way. Okay. Rel's in the chat, by the way. He's challenged you to a 1v1. See, that's pointless because a 1v1 in planet side doesn't demonstrate anything. 1v1 in real life, bro. <laughs> wear your Street Fighter shirt. I'll wear mine. Just the cuffs in the be- alley. Bandana's on. Let's do this. No alleys. And I'm not doing it out on the West Coast because you're going to be in an alley. And sp- I- well, you don't even have to Take be in advantage. an alley. You're going to be in some sanctuary uh, <laughs> tent city. And we'll be funny. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. I mean, so I, I think part of what you're... <laughs> Let, let me think about uh, how do I have like to unpack this because I think there are some important truths in what you're saying, but I don't agree with necessarily all of it. Um, so uh, a while back, I dove into this this idea, um, and I can't properly credit it, but um, it's this guy who was involved in media, and he he coined this. He accidentally coined th- th- this idea called the medium is the message. Does it ring a bell for you at all? Sort of. Okay. Well, then this will probably sound familiar to you. But basically, the idea is like when you're sitting down and and when you're hearing from someone, um, that humans are naturally set up and inclined to read all the contextual clues they can to, to, to understand what level of trust to place in the person they're hearing from. And, all, and it could be body language, how they're pitching their voice, you know, how they look, you know, what... And what wh- what platform they're speaking from is a big part of it too. Um, his his famous example is that if you're watching someone giving you giving a speech on TV, ninety five percent of what you're he- of what you're hearing in terms of the message is based on who you who they are, where they're standing, how they're speaking, and not at all about what they're saying, and that the words and the meaning of the 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 words are incidental almost. Um, it's this quality where um, it's like social community trust assessment. And, uh, it's one of the things that I think I see play out when people talk about cancel culture. Um, people try to erase pe- what people have to say based on some contextual clues about them. Right. Um, and you can take that down to a smaller alert level of severity and think about dismissing people. Like I know a lot of people, Lex, and I know I'm sure you do too who will dismiss you and what you say about the game or 
um, how to play because you're you're direct and can be an asshole at times. Yeah, you use naughty language. You use, you use naughty language. Yeah. Um, and I also know that on the other side that there can be a tendency to dismiss people who um, are kind of apologetic to the new player perspective or who like that that vision of big platoon planet side, who like to play the game that way. Like, if you play that way, whatever, I don't care about your opinion. Um, and so that's the medium is the message is, I think, is our natural inclination to assess trust. And I'm mentioning that because I have the luxury of, of knowing you, I'm talking to you offline, and I don't think that you have any bones with, with Rel specifically, but I don't know if I agree with the what, what I think I hear you saying and what I think I hear in the community a lot, which is the connection between YouTuber and developer, right? Someone went from being a YouTuber to being a developer. Um, I look at as an example, like the careers of other people in game development and what did they do before they were, were developers? Some of them flipped pizzas, some of them were doing QA work, um, some of them were students. Um, I guess for me, the argument of someone who made YouTube videos shouldn't be in a position to make decisions about games um, or that perspective isn't valuable, it freezes that person in time in a way that is, I think, not acknowledging the basic fact that everyone changes and grows. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. When I, when I say that, when I bring up the YouTube thing, I'm I'm not specifically speaking to the situation that happened in our game, right? I'm talking about the commentary that you read under the videos, you know, in the comment section on Reddit from individuals that say, you know. And you read, oh, Sirius should be the next game dev, right? Oh, I mean, like that's what I'm speaking to. Like, I, okay, what what exactly qualifies you there? Like, if the qualifications are you have a YouTube channel and you're a nice guy and you have a semi big following, and you know most people agree with you, I, I don't really think that's enough. Like, you have to go base, and this is on an individual basis here. That's that's what I'm yeah. speaking to when I talk about the YouTube thing. As in for, for Rel's situation, going from from doing that and and the life that he was living at the time and having the opportunity to go that, mm -hmm. that's that's great. I think you know that's what all of us want, right? And mm -hmm. he he got to have that opportunity. But you know when he got where he was, you know, you're in a situation where you're in over your head with mismanagement and all this stuff. Not necessarily from him, but man, sometimes I wonder, you know would he go back in time Ooh. and, you know, do something else? I'm saving Maybe that question for our next interview. That's a great question I should ask him. I don't know. Was it, was it worth it in the end? I don't know. <laughs> Granted, it's not the end. And and I hope that he goes yeah. and, and works on another game. Don't take that the wrong way. I hope that he goes and works on another game that, that you know, he truly builds from the ground up. Right, mm -hmm. and doesn't have to come in and do the the repair work for a game that has existential problems that cannot be solved by by one man or or one team. You know, we need yeah. a new. I, I don't want to say anything about the next game, but we we would need a new game to solve a lot of the problems that this game has. But anyway, back to the topic yeah. of realm. Yeah, I I don't have any any problems with with the guy personally, and and I think what gets conflated sometimes is when I talk. And granted, yeah, I use I use harsh language uh, often, and you know, it, but it comes from it comes from a, a passion and, and a, really a frustration. Mm -hmm. But when I call someone an idiot or a retard or something like that, you know, I am not addressing that person's character. I'm addressing their thinking on the subject on the topic, right? But that that is so lost on so many people. And they do it to they do it to me all the time, and it, you know I'm just it is what it is. I can't I can't defend myself to it. What can I do? I can just stop using naughty language, and but I, I feel like I don't know, I, I don't know. Hey, I'm I'm not saying you need to change, man. Um, 
I, I saw, I don't know. I feel like I see your truth. At least, at least enough of it that I'm. I find it interesting to talk about. And that's all I care about. All I yeah. care about is that you get the message and you understand what I'm trying to say, and you can look past your personal biases against me as a person mm -hmm. or a player, or or what language I'm using. Like as long as the message hits home and you understand what I'm trying to convey, you know, if it's if it's my fault that I fail to do that in a lot of times, yeah, that's my fault. But some people, I can, I'm reaching some people. Like some mm -hmm. people are getting it. So uh, what's wrong with you, all the rest of you? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I don't know. That's what I said. I don't know. I, I think it's also expedient to not try to communicate with everyone, man. It's too hard. Like and change. Yeah. It's, it's, that's, that's why like actually when you do those videos, you have to be super general and you can't, it's, yeah. you're banging your head into a brick wall, especially in this community. I envy you in some ways, actually, and how direct you are. Like, I have this, I, my personality is I'm very confrontation averse. You probably heard it, and you're starting this conversation with you. Like, I'm just, I tiptoe around stuff. This is part of my personality. I've always been that way. Um, but, uh, and the ability to just come out and say what you think, and uh, for me, it can be really, really challenging to get to, even get to that point. Um, it, even makes a know, lot of, it gets a lot of people upset. Right. And, you know, maybe I've set fewer people, but do I create as much meaning? I don't know. I'm not sure what the right way to go about it is. I'm not sure if there is a right way. I, I do want to mention. Sorry, go ahead. I think they're both worth having. It's, they're both yeah. necessary. Yeah, I think that's probably true. So Rel did respond to something we said a few moments ago. He said he, he's worked his balls off for almost five years to get to where he is today. Definitely a lot has been learned in that time. So I guess that's kind of a response to, uh, was it worth it? Um, but yeah, uh, we all changed tremendously. Uh, the person I was five years ago, like that person wouldn't be here today, like doing this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The, I was very like, for me, my life has changed very significantly from, I guess it would have been like six years ago now, but okay, massively. Right. But, but I always have, and this is, I guess, one of the good things about games is that I always have this as an outlet, right? Yeah. So no matter, no matter what is going on, like I keep, I keep my game stuff, like all this stuff and my, my actual life, I keep them very separately. Okay. Or very separate. I, I always have to, to this day. And because that this, this is, this is, it's intentional because this is supposed to be an outlet for whatever, because like this, the, the work, the work that I've had to do and, and the stuff that I've dealt with mm -hmm. is, I, I don't necessarily want to get into another, you know, we're not going to have a, a couch session like we've had here on, on some episodes, whatever you're but comfortable with, man, it's all good. Just know that I worked in law enforcement for, for eight years. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you, you have to have the compartmentalization you have to be able to flip the switch and and gaming is is a real way for me to do that and and to be able to focus my energy towards you know having conversations about some stupid stuff in a video game is, is a lot better outlet than you know going out and drinking every night or, or doing whatever you know yeah amen to that um i don't know what exactly you do and we definitely don't have to get into it but law enforcement's no joke like that's one of the hardest things you can do i think um well, i don't do it anymore i i, yeah. I got out of it because it's it's uh it was untenable for me and a lot had changed in my life from mm. the point where I, I started being in that uh to where it was like i can't justify doing this anymore mm. and it, it doesn't have anything to do with philosophy or you know systemic racism or all, all that other stuff it has to do with every day imagine every day you go to work you everyone that you meet is at their worst yeah that's hard yeah uh and and i was always a person like i it nothing it didn't really affect me like individually like there there were times where you see the you see things you see i've seen plenty of dead people uh all that type of stuff i've been shot at but it, sure. it's at a point where you know I gotta go. I go back to the station and do a report, and that's it. Uh, you want to see the chaplain? Nope, I'm good. And then you you go home and you do and you talk about nano. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Um. I've 
I'm fortunate in that I haven't had that many run-ins in my life where I've had to get law enforcement involved. I can think of one. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but um, my late mother-in-law was uh, struggled mightily with mental illness at the end, towards the end of her life, and um, to the point where we 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 tried to get her forceful help because she wouldn't accept any help, and uh, we there's a certain threshold that where you need you need the help from the people who can apply authority and who can man it didn't end up going anywhere like the hoops in our stim you have to go through to get people involuntary help is really are very high which probably makes sense but anyway i digress but seeing the person in uniform show up and deal with that situation and understanding that 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 might not be the first time that day they've had a situation just like that it's it's hard for me to relate to. It's it's staggering in a way, um, and uh, I don't blame anyone who wants to get away from that. Yeah, like I said, you have to have a you have to have the switch, or else it, it, it's just gonna it's gonna eat you alive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's switch back into um, the good stuff, the planet side stuff. Uh, well, that's subjective. So, I don't know. I think it's good. Um, now, so, you said that in 2015, 2016, you started doing content. Um, I got to know you in the last year, so there's a few years between then and there. Did anything notable um, go on for you in the world of gaming in, during those years? Or was it all just logging in every once in a while? making a video every once in a while. What did it look like for you? What was your involvement? Uh, basically, if you just looked at the last couple of years of, of the YouTube stuff I've, I've been doing, I've been trying to spend more time like making my arguments more concise and, and thinking mm -hmm. of solutions for stuff. But a lot, in terms of like actually playing the game, like my, my playtime has significantly dropped. Uh, but there's always times like I generally tend to come back when population comes back somewhat mm -hmm. because for me, you know, the juice of killing people needs people there, you know? So yes. when you have a big update, you know, escalation was big, but you know, we yeah. lost a lot of that population. So yeah. what back in the day, not to sound like an old boomer, but back in the day, you know, you had multiple fights to choose from. Right, because you mm -hmm. had enough population to support that. So if I went to a fight and it was total cancer and I wasn't having fun, uh, I could go look at the map and be like, "Well, there's six other fights that I can go to, so let's go try this one." Mm -hmm. Nowadays, uh, with the population where it is, you know, it's a little bit different, like with with the escalation stuff and everything, because that that was big. Like there was a lot of people, the most people we've had back in a long, long time. So mm -hmm. that was that was a big change. But then it, it just slowly goes down and down and then, you know, your options start to dry up. And when my only option is to log in and play on Indar because there's no other continent open and there's two fights on Indar and they're both horrible, mm -hmm. then I just log out. Like, I'm not like these other guys anymore where I got to spend eight hours a day playing the game to, to measure my dick. I don't have to do that anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So I just log out. I'm, if I'm not having fun in it, I log out. And that's most of the time. So I have a lot of restrictions on myself. Like, I will not play on Indar. I don't want to play on Esamir. Basically, I was down to a point in the last six months where if Hassan wasn't open, I wasn't logging in and playing the game. I like Hassan, too. I think there's some really I, good bases. I, I think it's great. They just only get to play it three hours a day because Indar is open for 21 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um so I don't know about you, but like sometimes when I get into that state too, I always think to myself, man, like this is supposed to be a sandbox game. Shouldn't I like make a fight happen? Shouldn't I like make a make a squad and like create a new front? Shouldn't I make the fun that I want to have? You can make a fight happen. It's just that there's going to be three lightnings pulled to kill your your bus that you just pulled to make a fight happen. It doesn't matter if you kill the first one because. The uh, Sunday Killer XX69, he's coming for you because he's got a directive to kill Sunderers. And yeah. you're not going to have a fight, boat, brother. It's not going to happen. Did you notice that the, uh, the, new, uh, the new facility type that got just put in the game in the last few weeks, the containment site, they, uh, those bases can enter a state where the attackers get a hard spawn. 
Have you had a chance to play around with that much? It's almost, it's almost like it's a great core design idea that every base should have a hard spawn for attackers. <laughs> wow, it's nice to see that we're not, you know, depending on a school bus to, to promote a war here. Wow, <laughs> crazy. Like those, I, I was having this conversation the other day about the amp stations that have the built-in hard spawns when you yeah. capture a point. Those are great. I love those. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, it's limited time only, like the McRib or something. You can't can't delve too far into that yeah i love i love the hard spawns too i'm totally sympathetic to that way of thinking that's part of the reason i like biolabs i mean also because i play light assault i don't get i don't get air to ground in biolabs and i can go on the roofs that feels nice well um, i don't know who's i don't remember whose stream i was watching but there was a mosquito in a biolab like <laughs> <laughs> inside the bio lab. I, yeah, you, you can sneak him in. If there's a way if there's a way for a vehicle player to get a vehicle in and, and spread his feces, it's gonna happen. You can't <laughs> you cannot stop it. I, I I don't know. Like okay, so there's like ten things we can talk about here. I have a little bit of sympathy for vehicle players. So I heard a perspective that I thought was pretty interesting recently. Um because I, I too tend to be like, oh, what the fuck are these vehicle players doing at my infantry fight? Like get the fuck out of here. You don't belong here. Um, and, uh, I had that feeling too. Um, but I, I had a conversation with, uh, Lanzer a few weeks ago. Um, I think he's in the devil dogs and, uh, he, we were talking about how, you know, the hex system moved to the lattice system back in early planet side and, um, thinking about the way the vehicle game has changed over time. And we, the, the, the idea that he put out there that I think is pr probably really true is that vehicles don't have enough stuff to do in planet side almost so like they, they, don't, they don't have anything to do except farm infantry yeah i mean you can put a few a points on the map in the middle of nowhere and destroy bases that were already good because you feel like you have to shoehorn some kind of something for vehicles to do because they don't they certainly even back when there was a lot of vehicles you had the people that would fight use their vehicles to fight other vehicles which still happens but what's what's way easier to do man what's 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 really low risk and high reward? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe just farming infantry and left clicking in, in the general direction of a big pile of guys who's not even fighting you. That's yeah. way easier. Yeah. I, don't know, I think this problem is a real bitch to solve, man. Um, I go back it's just to the like, interaction between the domains has, has yeah. always been a problem. I mean, it's so complicated. It's hard. And it's there's, other, there's other games that do it. Like Battlefield. Battlefield has the same problem. Like it's either they're completely vehicles are completely useless or they're completely or they're crazy. Yeah, right. But there's the the distinction is there's not infinity of them, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and th this is Aflex argument when I had him on last year, and he's like, finish the resource revamp was kind of his big takeaway to the to, to the domain issue. This is yeah, force multipliers are fine. But they should be like a gated resource. You shouldn't be able to have them all the time. You shouldn't be able you to should live not, in one. You should not be able to main a force multiplier. Right, right. And I, I, for whatever reason, Planet Side settled pretty early on, it seems, on a design. It's like, well, you kind of get to play the way you want. And there, there, there's some light limitation on it, but like, not really. If you really want to spend your time in a tank, you can do that. As long as you don't play really, really stupidly. I also think about like people who play infantry, like you do, and like I try to. And like, I mean, realistically, I, I think sometimes I wonder what what how the game would change if they made med kits like eight times more expensive, resource wise, and you couldn't just just spam them. Um, well, there's there's too much chip damage in this game for that, and the people that play medic that are your normal puppies are are frankly too brain dead to. To be able to to keep you up, so I would never be. And for the people that complain about medkits, you you have to get outplayed by someone medkitting a minimum of four times to die to them. So you you lose me on the medkit stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, I actually am not making the argument that medkits are bad. I don't think they are. Um, I no, but I, that, I think there's some sentiment that that if you had yeah. changed them in some way, or you made them less relevant, or you had fewer of them. It would somehow push this magical. Oh, the game will be more more teamwork oriented now. It's like nah. uh, bec because medics would have something more to do, and you'd be more inclined to go find a medic to get healed. But that's that's just stopping me from playing the game, and that's something that attrition did in Battlefield, the latest Battlefield Battlefield Five. They took out health regen. Oh, interesting. So yes, yeah, so 
you spawned with a health pack. So when you got damaged, uh, you would maybe if you were an assault class, you would regen a little bit, but you would never regen back to full. So say you got in one gunfight, you killed the guy. Well, you're probably going to die in the next gunfight. So mm -hmm. you either have to run back to a supply crate and get a med pack to heal yourself, or you have to rely on one of the people on your team who doesn't care about the game to interact with you mm -hmm. and press E. But this was somehow mm -hmm. supposed to promote teamwork, but it's massively unfun. And they mm -hmm. did the same thing with ammo. Yeah, it, it sounds a bit like uh, almost like a, a a hedge towards the uh like the the wow model of like tank healer dps or like you you get your roles and by creating dependencies you create the game you want to see um i don't yes, know but far far too many players boil down teamwork to throwing resources around and that's the most yeah. base stupid way to look at it yeah i mean look, there are a lot of different things we can pick at here um i have my own half-baked opinions too um like for like I, I I think that one of the cool things about med kits is that they actually create what feels to me like like like, like interesting choices, and maybe if I was good enough, they wouldn't be choices at all. I would just have the root the algorithm in my head. Be like, okay, but here's where I med kit. Here's where I fight back. Here's where I get out of position. I don't know, but for me, I'm always asking myself like, is do I need to bug out in med pack or should I double down and, and try to try to get in this guy's face? Um, interesting choices are always good to have in a game, um, and. I think if you try to nudge the the game in one direction or another, like I, I mean, there are things about the infantry game that you can definitely work on. Like we, we can definitely talk about Nano Weave. I want to give you a chance to talk about that because um, I think that's interesting, and I think I have a different take on it that I want to hear you tear apart. Um, and but the thing, well, the one that worries me the most is the vehicles and the domain interaction. And I know you kind of poo-pooed the idea of giving vehicles something to do, but I don't know. Like, well, it, I, I'm fine. I'm fine with giving them something to do, but but putting a point, ripping a point out of a base and putting it out in the field and calling that something for vehicles to do is extremely lazy and uncreative, and it doesn't do anything. It, it's it's so the vehicle points do better. aren't that is what you're saying. It needs to be something the, else. The it, it, the vehicle points are decidedly not that. Yeah, because they don't play any different, with, even at the places where, where they are. Yeah, I've noticed that. You know, um, I hate to go back to Planet Side One, but it's the only other point of comparison I have. Um, but in Planet Side One, the way that the vehicle and infantry stuff played out, for the most part, is that vehicles Very basically, segmented. yeah, and, and vehicles basically dominated infantry. Like, if you were an infantry player, yes. you could play around them a little bit. Did you play Planet Side One? I don't remember. Uh, briefly, but I, okay. I got banned. I got banned for three days because uh, I had a, spar a Sparrow Max, which was the AA Max that that fired like the the homing yeah, yeah. rocket onto aircraft. Yeah. Well, I was just at a regular fight, and I I locked onto this guy and fired. And apparently, my missile just kept following this guy like out of render range. And there was I, a I don't bug. Know if it was yeah, if it was automated or what. But I got banned or suspended for three days. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to play your game. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, in, in Planet Side 1, um, the domains were segmented much more literally, where infantry fights were base. Uh, there was a little bit of inter interplay in the base courtyards, um, but for the most part, uh, the, 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 cap the command consoles were indoors, and vehicles just could not get in into the indoor fight. It wasn't possible. Maxes were the vehicles of, the in of indoor fights. Um, and if you were outdoors and you saw a vehicle coming down, like you were probably going to die. And that Planet Side One didn't get pushed the way Planet Side Two has been, in terms of population and attention and meta strategy. There just was it was just a much smaller world of gaming back then. Um, it was but, a, it was a niche game in a niche gaming time. Yeah, I think that's a great way of putting it. Um, and we also have Nick Hotz here in the chat. Nick is uh, actually the the project manager on the the the, uh, the fan project to stand up a planet side one that you can play now and log into. So he knows a lot about this stuff. Um, but yeah, I like the idea of giving a vehicle something else to do in planet side two. I don't know what that thing is. Um, the way that the bases are designed, making it so that outside equals vehicle land just doesn't work, right? Yeah, I mean, when a lot of bases, it's 95% you know, of the play space is 
outside right. where your your spawn room is above ground and there's there's a, a 35 meter road in between you and the next bit of cover and then the vehicle just drives up to your spawn be like well why don't you just shoot the vehicle out of your spawn well there's 30 of them and my damage is pretty awful in order to deal with that it's it's a mess like yeah i i don't you know, the thing with giving them something to do giving them something to do is a game is a thing that this game has always mightily struggled with because everything that you were given that you wanted to end up doing always had to come from the player right mm. because there there's never like you have certs and everything but why am i doing what i'm doing and w that was another reason for me not really playing it's like what incentive do i have to log in like do i care about capping a base no what do i get from it do I really care about farming, uh, you know, 40, 50 guys at this fight? What do I get from it? All the directives mm -hmm. that I want to do are done. All the cosmetics that I want in the game, I've had for the last five years and nothing interests me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the frustration that, that I have is that, you know, constantly year after year after year after year and patch after patch after patch, it's always for someone else. And I, I just wonder when, when the patch is, you know, we have to hear about how mission system is not for us, you know. Uh, this specific type of player like me mm -hmm. it's not for me but i'm just wondering when when exactly is the patch for me mm -hmm. when is that mm -hmm. that's a tough one man um i'm thinking back to what you said about the escalation update and how the population boom brought you content all by itself yeah because people people is content people are content yeah. that's that's what it is but but it gets to a point where that's good for a little while. Like the juice is good for, you know, maybe a month or so. And then you're like, why am I doing what I'm doing? What's what, what am I doing? Yeah. Why? Why does capping a base matter? Why does capping a continent matter? Yeah. And to do me, you, do you think that out there in the multiverse, there's a version of planet site two that has better hooks for you? Could you imagine what some of those would be? You know, I actually had a, a really awkward multiverse conversation yesterday ah. with someone. Yeah. Uh, I, is there a version of the game out there for me? Sure. I mean, I, this version of the game is for me. Okay. In a way, but you know, you gotta, you gotta deal with some stuff. Is mm -hmm. there a way, it, it, like when people always say, well, your suggestion here isn't going to fix the game. Well, of course it's not. I don't think any one of my individual suggestions for the game makes the game, fixes the game. That's not mm -hmm. the case. Don't, I, I hate being you know, having the straw man used against me like that. It's like this, your one change, like if you have a nanite tax on over, depending on what percentage population you have in a hex or, you know, prevents you from pulling certain things that doesn't stop zerging. It's like, well, I never said it stops zerging or fixes the game completely. Like we, at some point we have to do something because we keep going down this road where we don't do anything or everybody poo poos when something wants to be changed or drastically changed, and then yeah. it's like, well, let let's just keep, let's just tunes is the driving cat this thing and just keep going, yeah, and and that's it. And if 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 you don't ever allow anything to change, and I'm talking to the the people that are like me too, which at some point you have to be objective and say, okay, this thing is a good thing for me. But for the overall health of the game, it sucks and we would be better off without it. You have to be able to reach that point. Mm -hmm. or, or we're never going anywhere, if mm -hmm. that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think that there's... It's really interesting. Like, So, one of the other big differences between Planet Side 2 and 1, in addition to what we talked about before, you mentioned the niche time. Like, when Planet Side 1 was around, there was no Reddit, right? There was no YouTube. I mean, I guess YouTube existed, but no one was really using it for gaming stuff. It wasn't HD. No streaming, really. Um, a lot of people didn't even have broadband at the time. And You uh, couldn't even record gameplay, really. You had fraps uh, and whatever. It like burned your computer up. It yeah, hard horrible. drives were hundreds of megabytes. Like, yeah. good luck. <laughs> so, like, uh, I, I guess, like, the, the the power the community have to, had to come together to talk about things and create narratives and had didn't didn't exist back then and to uh, today I feel like that power is growing stronger and stronger over time you know uh, we'll talk about it eventually I'm sure but the World of Warcraft community I've been watching kind of implode in the last week 
Um, people Deservedly. In, people are freaking out about uh, the Burning Crusade being <laughs> getting a cash shop monetization, uh, and people are freaking out about the fact that uh, retail, uh, the content drip is just drying out. Um, it seems like in order, in, in whatever sacrifices they had to make to get Shadowlands out is when they did uh, hit their ability to get the po the, the post release content done. Anyway, as um, you know, it's it's hard in the MMO world these days. D. Yeah, it's 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 rough out there. It is. It absolutely is. And but I've been watching the community conversation around it, and it's just fascinating how powerful it is to watch. You know, an Asmund Gold or any of the other like. A, a list uh, WoW celebrities talk about what the game is doing right now. And I have so much sympathy for the people who are making the game and cannot join that conversation. You yeah, just can't do I it. I mean, if, if you look at the way, like how many people like watch Asmongold or Belluar or yeah. Alt Preach or all these guys, and you have the weight of that and their communities that are just. I don't know if you watched the uh, Bellular video where he f he freaks out. He's with the guy at the table and he's... he's yeah, I've seen some clips from it, but he, he went to Yeah, town. like, and then if you do that, like, your whole community is, like, you're going to have the guys that are like, eh, well, maybe we should have a more nuanced take here. But you have that entire weight of all of those people's communities crashing mm -hmm. down on you for, for what you've done. And I, I think you see that in that in planet side yeah but not to that extent because we no. don't have nearly the you know and we're probably lucky right or rel is lucky that we don't have nearly the amount of of people like that but yeah like it's it's crazy like it but the, you know what the problem is okay. is that too many people have a voice you know yes some some people should just be like guess what nobody cares about your opinion we don't all have to hear about what you have to say. Just shut up and go about your life and just play the game. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of ironic for me to be saying something like that. But uh -huh. at the end of the day, not everybody... Social media is such a cancer, man. Like, not everybody cares about your opinion. Like, this 18-year-old kid talking about whatever. Like, I don't care, man. Like, just some people just need to be... Just like, I just want to go back. Like... I, I want to go back, like, I, when I was in school, like, in high school, we didn't even have cell phones yet. Like, yeah. it was just, like, on the cusp of it. And, like, imagine, like, if you've been to social gatherings in the last, like, f forever, like, everybody's just staring at their damn phone. Like, uh -huh. I, I hate this. I, I want to go back. We are such boomers, man. It's, like, it's it sucks now because you're, you're a boomer at 30, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, or twenty five in some cases. I don't know. I think as as technology, the the pace of technology's effect on our culture increases. Like the the generations are getting compressed almost. Um. So yeah, I I gra I I was done with what I was in college when World of Warcraft came out. Um. Jesus. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm ancient, man. I'm gonna be forty in a few years. Jesus. Uh, I was I was in my last year of high school, so we're we're fairly we're fairly close. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, but I I guess like I started going down this whole like trip down memory lane about the power of media and messaging and um I guess like I so there's two things about it. Number one, I I have a sense of hopelessness about our ability to find truth in these in these conversations because people who make the games can't cannot be a part of them not really like i'm going to interview rail again at some point probably and i'm interviewing i'm actually having another game developer on next week someone who's the um sorry not next week in two weeks um i'm be talking to the the studio narrative designer at, at a at arena at the company that makes guild wars 2. and um you know, I'm sure we'll have a good conversation, no doubt about it. Um, but there's a level of the the stakes for you and me to be honest about how we feel about the game are a lot different. Nothing, not even Nothing. not even close to the same. And uh, that that gap makes it ma means that all the real conversation that people who are making the games get to have happens behind closed doors because the stakes are, are too high for them. And I I wish for a time um, where 
those conversations about what really happens can happen more and more public, be more normalized. Um, Jason Schreier, a, uh, a games journalist who is known for doing exposés and stuff, um, just published a new book, and um, about it's it's kind of like cautionary tales about game development. And man, um, I guess I kind of have this like mother hand instinct where I just want to like bring all the quarrelsome children under my arms and be like, let's just figure this out. And that's kind of the conceit of my whole platform. So I'm sorry, the, the genie is out of the bottle. <laughs> yeah. It's not going back. Yeah. Well, I mean, things have changed in 15 years and 15 years, they'll be different again. So yeah. there's some hope I, there. Hope, hopefully I won't, I won't, still be doing this in 15 years honestly hopefully i'm, I'm Clip it. not playing anymore clip it uh, remind uh, me 15 years well i hope they clip it because twitch i hope twitch is gone on honestly it's a disgusting platform just copyright strike yourself <laughs> next time we do this we have to be in hot tubs all right all right next time next time perfect <laughs> okay well um we have, we have more stuff I think we can talk about, Lex. Uh, I want to take, if it's okay with you, a couple minute break. You cool with that? Yeah, that's fine. I, I drank way too much water and I got to piss really Me bad. Me too, dude. So that's, Me too. That's great. All right, let's everyone take a quick, quick piss break. We'll be right back. And we're back. Bladder's empty and ready to go. So, should we take a break from Planet Side? Should we talk about some World of Warcraft, Lex? Sure. I don't mind. So we've commiserated about World of Warcraft a bit. Uh, briefly summarize my experience I played back in the day. I raided up through Wrath of the Lich King. And uh, I gave it up for reasons. I won't go into it. I, I can, I guess. It's not a secret. It's a raid um, finder. Uh, no, like I just... My life was too... Well, okay. It's actually... I was too sad. I was too sad. <laughs> My life was going nowhere. And WoW wasn't helping yeah. me. So, no, it definitely doesn't help in that regard, no. So I, I gave it a break, and then my life got very busy. So I didn't feel tempted to go back for a while. Long enough. But uh, in 2019, when Classic came back, I played it. Uh, I got all the way through... Uh, downing um, Anixian Ragnaros. Did you and think then, you wanted it? Um, yeah, so, okay. Before, before Classic landed, I actually took the time to do something I don't do anymore, which is I made a scripted video on my YouTube channel. Uh, all about that, that lovely quote from J. Allen Brack, you think you do, but you don't. So, well, everyone knows this, but just for posterity. Um, up until the re the announcement of World of Warcraft Classic, which is, of course, a recreation of the original World of Warcraft in current times, um, the community had been clamoring for this to come back, for Blizzard to bring back old WoW. And uh, Blizzard had been like, what? Why Why do you guys want this? This, this makes no sense. I don't, I don't get it. People are playing it on private servers. Private servers are getting taken down. And then JLM back in 2017, I think, says, you think you want it, but you don't. And then in 2018, one year later, he fucking announces WoW Classic. And he was very wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people did turn out to want it. And me, I was curious about, to me, I was excited about the idea of a grand retort to the direction of the live services industry of gaming about cash shops and, uh, you know, uh, making social interactions more and more transactional and getting away from raid finder, group finder, getting away from microtransactions and back to a model of you're in a world, make the best of it. I love that idea. Um, also because I'd done it before and I thought it was cool at the time. And I experienced up through uh, like I mentioned, I, I leveled up to 60 with a friend. We took our time. We had a great time doing it. 
and then um, we joined a raid guild. We uh, helped them clear molten core, um, and you know, <laughs> not a blistering pace at all. Pretty casual. Got that Anixia, and then the weekend after Anixia fell, we were like, "All right, we're good." Like, I don't need to clear the rest of the content. I think I've, I've, I know what this is. I know what this is doing, and and uh, WoW is one of those things that is a lifestyle game. And I couldn't continue to play video games for four to six hours a day anymore. Um, so that's me. Um, what about you? Uh, I Well, I played when the game first came out. Well, the reason I had even interest in the game is because I had played... I, I was playing all the Blizzard games in like the late 90s, early 2000s, like, you know, Star, the original StarCraft, sure. Diablo, Warcraft... Two, I think Warcraft 2 might have been my first RTS. I don't remember. I think it was okay. Warcraft 2. But I, when Warcraft 3 came out, I, I've, I have like 10,000 games played in that game alone. And I just loved the whole, you know, the, the story, all the characters, all that, all that jazz and everything. Okay. The world, you know? Yeah, so when I, they're like, yeah, we're going to do an MMO. I'm like, what is that? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. So then it came out and it was like, yeah, you played with your friends. And I played... All the pretty much all the way up to Wrath uh, mm. of the Lich King, right? And then after that, I again, you know, life happens, and I was way more busy in life. I was more interested in you know women and working and all those types of things. And WoW is really kind of a, a hindrance to all those things. Yeah, even still today. But uh, yeah, so for retail for me, I kind of stopped playing after that. Like I would occasionally, you know like an idiot i would pay for the expansion and log in and play for a week and be like uh, and I'd just stop again i did that a lot okay so uh yeah when they announced classic i was like all right let's go I, that that was that was the one i knew i definitely enjoyed you know knowing that the the player of games that i am now i'm like this is gonna be great okay you know so I ended Hardcore, up for skills focused like that. Yeah, kind of player. yeah, it was okay. awesome. But I, I had no idea what it would become. I had uh -huh. no idea what that entailed <laughs> in that game. Right. So I a couple of guys that I played with back in the day, uh, you know, we were going to all play together. OK, so classic launches and we're on Harad, which is a U.S. I think East server. And there's a 30,000 queue every day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So at the Gorgeous. time, what I was what I was doing during the day, I didn't get off until like four or five p.m. like a normal person. And you know, when I got home and got into the queue, which was thirty plus thousand people, I wouldn't be able to play the game until around eight thirty nine p.m., mm -hmm. which is not great. So people were having like some of my friends were resorting to having to you know use like remote login yep. where they are to get on the game. And That's I what like, I did the first few weeks. This this is horrible. So <laughs> you you endured that, and then we were all supposed to level together, of course. But some people were losers and weren't doing anything with their lives, so they were in and they were playing and they were out leveling people. And I play a warrior, which is the most awful cancer class to level solo in the That's, history of video yes. games. Because uh, if you miss dodge or parry, maybe two attacks in a row, you're likely to die. Mm -hmm. Or if you get a second mob, you just have to run away and reset everything because you're probably going to die. Because and it's awful. And I played my two friends. They played a, a shaman and a hunter. So man, things would have been great for me, and we would have had a nice time if you played together. Yeah, if we played together. But the hunter man, he had no life and was leveling up, just doing his his thing. And the shaman guy, uh, severely complicated his life with some life decisions. I'll, mm -hmm. That's all I'll say on that. But okay. <laughs> so he was he was not available as often as we would have liked. So he fell behind too, and then we all kind of became segmented. And I wasn't having fun. I finished leveling, and I was like, "I'm done." Hmm. So I didn't play again. I didn't. What was that? That would have been, I guess, September or early October of yeah, the that game year. Came out in came August. out like the end of the very last day of August or something yeah. like that. So I didn't play again until I think June or July. And I ended up transferring and playing with a bunch of, of people from AC. You know, I played with Shock, Latro, like they're all wild players too. So we mm, they're playing yeah. in that guild. A lot of crossover. And I had to come back. Playing aside and MMO very, players. Very strange. Yeah. yeah I, 
Um, so, I mean, I had to relearn because I never played like the, what is officially like the main DPS spec and the most overpowered class in, in the game. Like, I never played dual wield back in the day, and there was a lot of misconceptions. I had a lot of work to catch up on. Like, I do a lot of studying and research. So, where do, where do I go to, for everything? I go to Twitch and mm-hmm. start watching the best. I try to find the best player I can find that plays that particular class, and then I just watch them twelve hours a day. You know, somehow, if they stream that long. So it was a big learning curve. Uh, I had, like, green gear, all this stuff. They were doing Blackwing Lair, and it was all real... I hadn't done that stuff. I don't even remember... I did Molten Core in Vanilla, but I think the guilds that I was in was were so terrible that I don't even think we killed Razor Gore like, in Blackwing oh, Lair. So, yeah, oh, it was bad. That's brutal. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, a lot of it was all new for me. Like that's doing cool. That's cool. All the rest of Blackwing Lair and all, you know, I had never done my friends, the guy that made the life decisions. He had been in some like back in the day, like this was super sweaty, but those guys would check your bags, your inventory for specific things. And this is back in like 2005. Mm-hmm. People were, mm-hmm. I didn't know people were doing that back then, but he was in that type of guild. Uh, yeah. And he, he was the only one of us that did AQ40. Mm-hmm. so that was cool to do that and then Nax Nax kind of like it was you, you kind of did Nax and Wrath of the Lich King but it wasn't really the same version but you no not at you, all the challenge is like all is like all of it yeah and yeah. and I think Wrath of the Lich King was the first time they really started to uh, lower lower the bar on raids make them easier to get into anyway another conversation yeah but yeah, it was it was all a new experience for me, but it, a completely new experience for me because of uh, Warcraft logs. So Warcraft oh, logs is this great God. thing that you can go and you can see every single action that happened during a raid that's being logged, like down to the, what button this person is clicking at what time. It, it's just, it's really great if you're that kind of guy, mm-hmm. like the super nerdy analysis type stuff. So, but what people do and use that for is to analyze their gameplay and how do I play better and I'm into that wholesale. So that became a, a big obsession for me. But what really I spent the most time doing was farming consumables and getting world buffs. Oh. Yeah. Boy. And, the, and what the do you rating, think of that? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm mixed because I'm a player that plays a class that greatly benefits from having full world buffs. It's just way more fun to play warrior with full world buffs and consumes way mm-hmm. more fun. But at the same time, since it's, it's, it is so fun and you are so powerful when any little stupid thing happens and you die, you, you might as well turn the game off because you don't want to play anymore and it's miserable mm-hmm. and it sucks. Right? So there's that whole, th- whole thing every week where, you know, just one little stupid thing happens and you're dead. And then it just cr- it crushes you all that preparation because you do like like I was doing, uh, you know, spreadsheets on cooldown usage for every boss, like at what percent for each one. There's there's add ons to do that. What's one of the most important things with the class? Right. Like besides besides itemizing correctly. When do you death wish? Y- stuff like that. Yeah. All your cooldowns, stacking them just right. It's a lot of little nuanced stuff, too. But then depending on like the guild I was in initially. It was kind of like this weird mashup of because you think of the AC players, right? And they're like super hardcore dudes mm-hmm. and everything. But in WoW, some of them are a little bit eh, different. Like mm-hmm. Latro would never, Latro was a priest, but even when he was DPSing, which never should have been allowed to happen, uh, <laughs> you know, he doesn't get any world buffs. Like his people are lazy, you know? But All there's right. a lot of people. There was about, maybe there was like a core group of like 10 to 15. Of like the the kind of like semi hardcore dudes that are carrying the rest of them, and I won't even get into the rest of them. But it's there was two raids, so there was raid one, which is the one I was in on Wednesday nights, and there was the Saturday raid. And the Saturday raid was a complete clown fiesta. Ah, uh. so those guys were always like you know the the mega casual guys, and I think me and uh, I don't know if you know Ten Minute or not. I don't. But we ended up. It, it, so it was all like dopey and all these people. It, if you know AC people, it was you know them. But we oh. our our schedules our schedules changed and we had to raid 
you know, your two biggest pumpers on Wednesday night have to go raid and Saturday raid. And so that was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, that killed for me. I, I, got, I got to the point where like, I don't want to play with these people. Like this is, I can't stand this anymore. Like they're my friends and all, but I can't, there's too many, there's too many people that we have to carry and it's not fun. And next, the opening yeah. of next Ram is the beginning of that because that was the yeah. first time that these people thought that they could just walk into an instance. Hey, it's classic. Wow. Everything's easy. I just get world buffs and I walk in and I stomp everything. Uh -huh. Well, Max Ramus didn't go that way, but the lead up to it was everybody, you know, linking pictures in the discord of their guild banks. You look at all these uh, consumables I have for Max Ramus. I'm ready for, you know, this is going to be great because they didn't know anything. So they didn't bother to learn any of the mechanics of even trash. They didn't know any boss mechanics, nothing. So they just walked in and the first night uh, it was a complete and total disaster, as you would expect. And our main <laughs> tank quit the game uh, that night. And I was like, well, he's the only tank that's worth a shit in the entire guild. So I'm done to see you later. Uh -huh. So that was the end of that. And then I end up joining some super sweat lord. I think I have talked to you about this on, on that. They were like the number. Th I don't remember if they were number three. Or number six, I think number six world and like number three North American horde guild nice. that had cleared next Ramus. They were they were hardcore. They had mm -hmm. four raids, and the one the one raid that was like super mega nerd, like the big fast clear, like that's the raid I applied, and they put me in that raid. Nice. I was like, all right. I was like, well, do you have any experience speed running? I was like, nope. So I raided one time with them. It was interesting. Uh, but there wasn't, it was like, there's no real like connection there. I'm just kind of there. Like, and that's, that's kind of okay. to be expected of the first run of something. But I, the environment, like the pace and everything, I enjoyed that. So I was like, <laughs> eh, I'm still in this crappy server on the West coast that I don't want to be on. Cause I came over here for the other guys, but I'm not playing with them. So I was mm -hmm. like, Hey, I'll go back to Harad with my friends who are, well, one of them anyway, was still an officer in one of these guilds and still rating. So I'm like, oh, I want to go over there and play with him. Uh huh. So I, I left that server and transferred back to my home and joined this guy's guild. And, you know, I think it was like that guild ended up dying like a month later, but <laughs> got into the guild like, hey, guys, what's up? And everybody's like, the only person I really know is like one other guy in this officer. And I ended up getting benched for like some guy that is ter a terrible player. And I'm like, well, at this point in the game, I already wanted to quit. So uh, I'm not going to sit here and get benched for someone that I'm better than. So see you guys later. So when uh -huh. I left, I joined this other guild and I raided with them all the way up until I stopped raiding, which was exactly two months ago today. Okay. And how was that experience? In that particular guild, it was... It was interesting that when I got when I first got there, they still had two raids. Mm -hmm. They had the raid one, of course, which is the hardcore raid with all, all the, the pumpers. And then they had the raid two, which is always kind of a, a mixed bag. And the raid one was making progress, or they had already killed uh, Kel'Thuzad. And we're kind of... It's hard to say that you ever have Naxxramas on farm, especially like... Okay. Just because it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of weird and dumb stuff happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. But there's like just... The, there's the slime river. Yeah, it's just dumb. Just people die. If you have one too many people die to dumb stuff, like, eh, you can... There's some mechanics in there that kind of screw you up. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, the raid two was mostly raid one guys on alts plus a bunch of other people, right? So they could not kill four horsemen. Like from the time that I was, uh -huh. I joined that guild in January, and I think it was almost March, and well, all the way through February, they could not kill four horsemen. They went on, we raided on Saturdays, and I think they raided on Sundays. And. Uh, Every day you would go, I wonder how they're doing. You go check the logs and you just see on four horsemen, there's eight entries. So they just wipe for three hours on four horsemen. And it's like, well, that's when you see people start to get frustrated. Yep. And I don't think yep. they, that's as far as I ever got in vanilla, man. I, 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 I read it next, but four horsemen stopped me cold. They killed it once. And then once, if you're a guild that's struggling to kill four horsemen, Mm. Okay, you killed, and that's the last thing you need. Now you have a whole nother uh, check on, you know, frost resist with saffron and all that stuff, and it's a totally different fight. And for people that haven't done it, it, it can be hard. 
So guess what? They wiped on Saffron too. Mm -hmm. So then it was like, eh, and then a bunch of people started leaving. And then there was the guild master ended up, what he ended up doing was completely disbanding the raid two. And he handpicked everybody from the raid two that he wanted and made the cuts that he wanted in raid one, whether they be a political decision or, you know, we don't like somebody who they're a good player, but we don't like them. Ah. Uh. Got to love wow, it and formed the uh, the Omega raid group. So that uh-huh. was what the, the goal with that raid was to we we're going to do sub two hour clears every Saturday at three o'clock, and that's eventually what we what we did. I think you had some some troubles at first, and you had some rebuffing, but now now they're consistently every week they go in and clear under two hours, which for a semi hardcore guild on on a populated server this at this point in the game, I I think it's impressive. Yeah, they're, they're not ever going to be a they're not going to be a speed run guild because I don't know what the speed run stuff is now for Nax Ramus, but the last time I was watching and paying attention to it, it was like low fifty minutes. Wow, only only low fifties. Interesting. I remember for Nax Ramus. Yeah. Well, well, I'm I'm comparing it to the, like the uh, the speed clears in the first few days when it came out. Um, I remember like I think the. The, the the first the fastest clear in the first few days was like a minute like like an hour seventeen something like that like yeah. low to but, mid but ones. even yes but even to go from an hour seventeen to like high forties like the amount of th- innovations and changes that people had to make like yeah. that's and every every new circus with with DMF you see people are trying new stuff you're trying to cut those minutes off and it, it's that's what I enjoy it for. I got that into watching fun, that, man. that scene. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And there's some gamesmanship. People try to hide things and they don't yeah. they don't record their logs and they don't stream intentionally. But <laughs> a big part of it was PTR. Because people oh. were going on PTR and, and just sitting on the PTR for 17 hours a day running this stuff. It's practicing. And, and trying to do it right. Yeah. Like there's a, I don't know if you've I don't think I ever linked it to you, but it, the the fairly you're familiar with the Fairlina the trash before Fairlina and that whole room with the acolytes and, and yes. the piles. Yes. Well, there's a way that you stack all of them up and you kill all of them at once with, with sappers and invisibility potions and somebody who's gathered them all up. So it, it everybody's computer breaks, <laughs> the whole thing lags and it's just one FPS. And then sometimes you have some people that die and that's generally where the speed runs for some of these guilds end is where somebody <laughs> screws up or clicks off their invisibility pod or it wasn't the right thing, or they have like maybe four or five people die in the resulting chaos, uh-huh. and then your run's just, your, your run's just over. Mm-hmm. Speed running. Man. But yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. So you said that you uh, stopped two months ago. Um, what, what, uh, what ended it for you? Uh, the amount of time I was having to put in uh, for the reward, mm-hmm. like the the juice, the juice wasn't there for me anymore. So for me to be putting the generally, I buffed on the day before, and sometimes I would have to sit waiting for buffs to come out. Mm-hmm. Like I would spend maybe sometimes up to eight hours trying to get buffs that day Oof. and organize it right. And you're just at your computer all day, and you like my f- you should see my phone and my alarm clock app for the times. I've never taken any of them out. So basically, you can find almost every minute of of the day I have a potential alarm set up for that minute. And some of them are labeled, some of oh them are not. God. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. Miss me with that but, shit, man. Oh. Yeah, uh so there's that and then there is the you know the nature, the RNG kind of nature of of damage and combat and stuff. Like if you have a poor performance, it could be something stupid or if like it just so many things can happen that like I talked about already when you die with world buffs as a warrior, mm-hmm. you're, you're just it's just it's terrible. It, you don't <laughs> want to play it anymore. Like once once you have reached the point, once you're slaying everything, which to be fair, I think should be the point of classic. I don't think classic was ever intended to be this giant like dick waving skill fest, right? I don't think the people that think it was supposed to be that I think are, are missing the point. The point is to go in and smash everything and have fun and get some loot and do that type of thing. So yeah. And when I can't do that, cause I I'm dead, which is not always my fault. Cause it's a big 40 man team game. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
yeah, I just I just get frustrated. And most weeks I was getting frustrated, not necessarily with with the buffing and the, the consumes and all that, but it was just how things were playing out in the actual raids. Yeah. Right. The human and then, carnage. And then at the end of the day, it's it's too like I I think I killed like two I had like two hundred some boss kills and I had nothing to show for it. I didn't right. have any literally nothing from Nex Ramus, right? So uh, when I when I end up joining, I'm like, look, I really don't care about gear, but uh, you know, at some point it would be nice. Yeah, you know, because I'm, I'm already I'm already beating people who severely outgear me just because of the nature of, you know, how I prepare and how I play. But you know, imagine if I actually had something, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, <sighs> it was a culmination of, of a bunch of stuff that all. It's, like I wanted to quit in December when I originally left that that guild, and then I kind of got back into it and th the reason i joined that last guild i was like i'm done i'm selling all my stuff on the auction house like that's it and then i was in the process of selling all my raid consumes which i have multiple characters full of raid consumed <sighs> selling them all and then this guy from that guild who i became friends with he you know he messaged me he's like hey you know you want to kill some undead stuff i'm like man leave me alone like <laughs> i'm trying to quit <laughs> yeah i told him i'm like dude come on yeah. Yeah. Friends don't stop friends from quitting World of Warcraft. Um, that's quite a story, dude. So, okay. You said that you had not cleared past Razor Gore in vanilla and you killed everything in classic. Like, was the experience yeah. of uh, let me let me think of a good question to ask you about that. Um did the content surprise you at all? And do you think it was worth it? Uh, not, not really. It, I wasn't really surprised because I do a lot of, you know, research and, and looking up what I'm supposed to do. So I know, I know the fights before I go into them. So mm -hmm. the, the shock and value of, I've watched it a hundred times before I guess I've I'm done it. I was thinking more about like when, when the game was, when classic was on the way, there was a, a big community discussion about, oh, well, classic raiding was hardcore. You don't understand. Like, back in the day, like, you wiped and you wiped. People were terrible. And then, of course, when people got into it, everything just fell over up until now. I, did, I didn't know. I didn't really know what to expect because, I, yeah, it was hard back in the day. And I, I wasn't really, I was kind of ignorant to all the all the stuff that had happened like on private servers and what people were doing and how far people had come. Like yeah. I was totally oblivious to that type of stuff. So okay. yeah, I, it was basically like I walked out of 2004 and 2005 and just walked right into, what was it? 2019. Yeah. And it was, so yeah, like when I said I had a large learning curve to overcome it, it was a lot. Word. Word. To go from basically nothing. And uh, now that the experience is behind you, what what do you think about it? Were those hours well spent? Did you? Well, to answer to answer again? the other question, which I I didn't answer, the, okay, was it please. worth? Um, it it was yes, because I at that point I needed a time sink. Okay. For what it was a, actually it was right after escalation to get back to planet side. Like it was, it was escalation in March. Was it February March twenty nineteen? No, Escalation was last year, 2020. Was it 2020? Uh, DX11 was, was 2019. I, whatever it was, I needed a break from Planet Side as yeah, usual. Okay. So I needed a, a time sink. And I was like, I'll just go play WoW. I didn't realize that it would be as much of a time sink as it was hmm. between the, the learning and the preparing and, and doing all that stuff. But was it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't really hesitate to say I would never say no, because okay. I, I didn't. I feel like I didn't put all that effort and energy into something. Like if I put a lot of time, effort, and energy into something, and I'm not getting anything from it, that's when I stop. I quit, right. which is what I did in March. Mm -hmm. But up until that, up until that point, yeah, I, yeah, I had I had fun doing it. I mean, it was when when you were successful, it was great. There's a lot of times you're not always successful. You can't, you're not parsing the way you want to, and it is all this stuff. So Weird. It, Weird. It, it was, it was fun. That's perfect. Like, I think that, you know, one of the hardest things for gamers like, like you and maybe like me too, who like to dive deep is to, is to actually pull back. 
it's one of the hardest things to do, I think, sometimes. And knowing yeah. when your moment is hit, where it's like, it's time to pull back. Yeah, and I think uh, I'm older now. Maybe I didn't do this so much in like my 20s, but in like I'm a, I'm in my mid 30s now, and I feel yeah. like my penchant for stop do I don't do things that I don't want to do, and that's that's in in games and in life now. I say no. If you learn yeah. anything, you need to learn how to the say no to people, no. situations. Yeah, and yeah, you just if it's not working for you, man, just that's it. And I think that's it's one of the things like people always ask me about planet side. It's like, why can't you just say no and walk away? Mm -hmm. You know? And it's taken me a real, Mm -hmm. it's taken me, I don't have an answer for them. I I don't know. It's taken me a really long time. I I feel like in the last month or so, because of like some of the community stuff that's happened and my general, you know, feeling of the game and everything. Like, I think I've, I've finally gotten to the point where I can do that, but then you feel like that. And then, like, some topic or some drama comes up, and they're like, Lex, what do you think about this? And I was like, <laughs> like, I, I, it's it's hard because pe- when you get out of it, people ask you to come back in it, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. So, uh, unless I like cut off everyone ever, then it's just never going to go away. Right. So maybe that's that's just my one thing that I, I, okay, I'll, I can, this is my cheat, you know, I'm going to leave it there. I say no to everything else I don't want to do, but yeah, I think there's still some value to be had there. Yeah, I I, I sympathize with that. Um, my my game that's like that is um, oh by the way, uh, hello Commander Sirius and the Sirius Army, welcome, welcome, welcome to to the party. Um, we um. So Team Fortress Classic, TFC, nice shit. Looking shades, man. I can put my vest on too, or or should I should we do the interview like this? <laughs> the shade. Come on and the shade getting thrown. Or, or is it this way? Where I I, I liked I like the interview with Sirius. He looked handsome the whole time. I, I, I don't know if, if, if that position was just an artifact of his setup or if he found like the perfect like serious profile, but I liked it. <laughs> um, so yeah, my cheat game is Team Fortress Classic. And um, it's be- a part of it, the reason it becomes a cheat is because like you were saying, so many people who you're still in touch with in the world of gaming still are connected to that game. And it, it kind of ends up like you grow as a person. Like I was... I was in high school when I was playing that game. Like yeah, I, I completely, completely different person. I I ran a competitive team for three years. We paid to two hundred and fifty organized matches, kind of like farmers league matches, almost similar to that. Um, and uh, that will never leave me, probably. Um, and I, I jumped into it last year, and I had fun with it for a little while. I stayed in too long. I got burned. Um. And I probably will get burned again. Yep. But you're always willing to get burned. And that's that's how I am with 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 that game and it's kind of like the devil yeah. you keep on your shoulder to remind you of what the, what your better angels sound like almost. Something Yeah, like or that. that or that 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 one girl that you've known for a super long time that you know you shouldn't be around that you know just keeps creeping back just in. Can't turn down. No, you can't say no. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, where should we take this next? Okay. Why don't we talk about stream sniping? That should be a... Now that Sirius is here. <laughs> uh, I really wanted to ask you about your take on Burning Crusade Classic, though. Oh, we can do that. Uh, it, it's absolutely horrible. Like, the, number one, I'm not that interested in Burning Crusade. Okay. Anyway, because my class sucks in it. And I don't play a bunch of different classes. So the world buffs are gone. So eh, I lose some interest there. The fights, the the raids are not really melee friendly. Uh, warriors don't really scale really well until very late in the expansion. Um, it, the, the obvious blatant money grab stuff is... I mean, what what else could you expect? You know, I think... If you look at back at it now, I think we were very lucky with the release of Classic to avoid mm-hmm. that kind of stuff mm-hmm. for the most part. 
But now I think they see that, oh, maybe we missed an opportunity here. We had all these millions of people come back. Hmm, maybe we can do something different here. I did not expect them to do this because originally when they announced it and how they announced it, I I think I even had a conversation with you about it. I was actually, hey, I, I kind of got interested in it. Yeah. You know? But the whole, this whole thing now with the, the, the paying for the character copies and look, I get it. Like you, 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 you're going to have to pay at some point in order to keep those characters on the classic realms and, and move them over to the, the burning crusade stuff. Look, I get it, but at $35 like for that game, like, and you already have to have a subscription to play anyway. And it's probably people who already bought shadowlands and have shadowlands. It's just, to me, it's the Activision type thing where yeah. it's just like, I can't, as much and there's a lot of things too like with with planets i'd like you have to fix these things before i'm interested in playing your game again like the, okay. the botting the boosting and the i forgot what the hell was the other one? gdkp those you have oh. to deal with that stuff you have to deal with that stuff before i'm interested in playing your game again or uh -huh. even another version of uh fresh vanilla sure yeah botting boosting um i read an interesting take about botting a while back, um, basically, that was suggesting that it's not in Activision's financial interest to do anything about botting, except yep. in, in for the egregious versions of it. And at least in classic, like I, I was fascinated to watch the GDKP scene emerge. Maybe I can briefly explain that for people, and you can you can fill in the blanks before I miss anything. So GDKP, the G is for gold. DKP is Dragon Kill Points. It's, you know, a callback to the old uh, system of you show up to raid, you get points, you spend, you, you bid those points to get loot. It's supposed to make things uh, fair. But GDKP is based on gold. And when loot drops, you, you bid gold out of your wallet for it. And the interesting thing about GDKP is that that gold does not go to the raid leader. I mean, it does go to the raid leader. But at the end of the raid, all the gold that was earned by the player bidding gets distributed out among the people who actually made the raid happen, uh, members of the raid. And the splits can be different depending on what role you have. Maybe the main tank gets more. But what it ends up doing is it creates this e economic incentive for people who want gear but and, and are, are willing to buy gold so they can get the gear very easily by, by get, joining these runs, paying real money, Bring game gold, paying the gold into the run. And then people who aren't even engaging in RMT, real money transactions, are incentivized to join these runs because the fact that people are in the game have this much gold drives up the prices of raid materials that you need for raid consumables. And in order to keep up, you have to make money off of these whales, these RMT whales, by joining these GDKP runs as a, a worker to get a payout. And it, it just creates this crazy tail wagging the dog effect where because, because of bots, we have RMT and because of RMT, we have GDKP and because we have GDKP, we have like these, the vibe I get is almost like, like, like an indentured servitude class of wow rating. Is that fair? That's, that's all. Yeah. It's, it sucks. And there's a lot of people that, you know, the, even the idea of having like an old style raiding guild where you just raid, some people don't even do that anymore. They just do GDKP and that's, yeah. that's all they do. And in an era where knowledge about how to play your class and how to do the fights is so, is so out of the hands of the, of the guilds, which is where it all used to be 15 years ago because about, because we didn't have things like Twitch, YouTube, social media, because you can do that, like you don't need the guilds to actually have this institutional knowledge of how to play the game anymore. And everything's just a everything's just a pickup group that you yeah. can do. That sounds so sad. Yeah, and until if you don't deal with that, like yeah, for the financial incentive thing for them to to ban the account, if you think about it that way, yeah, if you're banning say a hundred accounts, well, that's a hundred paying accounts, right? Yeah. yeah. But you got to think that once they're banned, or if they're permanently banned, they're canceled. And guess what? They have to all resubscribe again. Yeah. 
So I, there was some statistic. I, I still hang around some WoW streams, and I, there was some outlandish, crazy statistic of like actual population left in the game. That was something like I don't know if it was like forty six percent of all players left in the game are actually bots. They're they're not <laughs> even players. And you know what? I, it doesn't sound that out there to me. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, it's it's bad. And the the boosting with the really we just the mages. The whole boosting scene, they they could have easily fixed. And this is another big problem I have is they could have okay. put the they could have removed the batching uh, a long time ago. Spell batching. Uh, yes, they could have done that. They could have done that stupid uh, thing that you put your world buffs in and store them. They could have done that a long time ago. Why mm-hmm. did they do that? You know, three weeks before the game was over. Like it's just. Man, that would have made my life so much easier. It's the Eye of Sauron, man. It gives and it takes. That that version well, of WoW with the spell batching fix, with the boosting fix, would have come with story mounts. Well, that's exactly what it is, because yeah. the, we're about to hit the pre-patch on the 18th, and you took batching out of the game, I think, a couple weeks ago. You had the world buff stuff, but they're actually getting rid of that now. Mm-hmm. So basically, it's it's winding down now, and it, it, they did a lot of stuff that I wanted to do, but now, oh, you need your dark portal pass. Uh, time time to pay to go through the dark portal. Nope, I'm good. I wish you have a ticket Sorry. counter right in front of the dark portal in Blasted Lands. Yep, yep. And think about think about Hellfire Peninsula because think back to yeah, uh, think back to the beginning of WoW Classic. And at least you had people spread around the different starting zones. Well, guess yeah. what? Everyone's going to Hellfire Peninsula. So how many layers are you going to have? 30, 40? Like, it's going to be crazy. Remember the promise to get down to one layer? What happened to that? I, a, a lot of them did. A lot of them did. Yeah? Even, even like my server on Harad, like we got down to one layer. Okay. And occasionally you would hit two. But that came, you know, the, over time... You know, the populations fall and fall and fall and fall and fall. And they have, you know, like, I think it's Ironforge.pro or something that tracks the populations of all the servers. Mm-hmm. And it's it does it based on, I think, it takes from Warcraft logs and how many people are actively raiding. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not even necessarily really an accurate summation of, yeah. of all the players that are playing. But it gives a, a general idea because most people that are playing that game are raiding. Mm-hmm. That's the main draw. Is, do you have any impressions about the PvP scene from Classic? I did back in vanilla. I did. I grant. I went to rank thirteen. Nice, uh, dude. It, Shit, it, it is not nice. It's the. It was the most horrible thing I've ever done. I think in a video game. <laughs> and that's exactly. I was, I was in a guild that we basically manufactured warlords and uh, high warlords. Generally, okay. high, I think we made like seven or eight high warlords. Yeah. But yeah, we played, I was 17 or 18 at the time, and I was playing in WoW Battlegrounds 17 hours a day Ooh. and going to sleep and getting up and because you had to set the brackets. And if anyone yeah. wasn't playing nice with the brackets, guess what? Well, you're now going to be in our group. We're going to pluck you from whoever you're playing, and that's how we did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, PvP, as a warrior, it's super fun. You yeah. Know, if you, group if you have one healer like you're killing everybody and you have you have a good weapon like it's super fun but solo it's awful and in general the pvp balance is absolute dog mess i you know it's not it's not fun uh there's too many stuns like that's and it's also coming from a version of the game is diminishing returns are super low or non-existent right uh you know fighting a mage is impossible fighting a geared shadow priest you're just gonna die like all you can really count on is is beating up on a warrior that has worse gear than you like significantly like he has mm-hmm. peter pan gear on or there's a rogue who thinks he can fight you for whatever reason and you just smash him but yeah other yeah. than that like it's super frustrating like all the casters are cancer the the hunters are cancer like the scene yeah, yeah the scene now is so bad with the way people behave like uh the, the stuff that I saw, I had a friend, Iron Chief, who actually played in Farmers with us. Yeah, right, Iron I remember Chief, him. Yeah, he did the Warlord grind in, in Classic. Ooh. And most of the time he was, I think he soloed up to like 11 or 12, but then it's at a point where that entire thing is being 
you know, gate kept by the people who were setting the brackets. So mm -hmm. he had to get into the group and he had to play nice and he had to take wait his turn for when he was going to have enough standing to rank up. Now, I don't think I don't know if you want to go into the, how ranking works. I don't think it's it's just you don't just look it up. It's awful. Yeah, it's the worst thing ever invented. Uh, basically. But anyway, Chief wanted to, he was ranking up to 13 to get some gear for raiding, and he was in the raid too, and he wanted, you know, he thought the best way for him to get gear was to go PvP for a while, so he took, I think, at the end of being like four months of just PvP, oh, and God. Yeah, he was tired of it, and we wanted him to come back to the raid, and we were all cheering him on, and he was like, I think I'm gonna break bracket this week. So he broke brackets in the last week and got his warlord, but he ended up screwing out like I think two to four people out of their stuff, and that was <laughs> like like I was getting shit for just being friends with him, uh -huh. and I'm a I'm a shit magnet already, and <laughs> I did nothing wrong. I was just friends with Chief, and people were sending me shit like like in in the guild, like in my own guild. Uh -huh. Because we had people in that guild who were friends with people that got screwed by Chief. And then they were like, well, you're friends with him. So it's like, ah, oh, it's so bad. It's it's really awful. If you ever, I'll never, I say I'll never do it. But I, I think like if they did another fresh and it, they fixed all the things, I, I would probably go to 12 and stop there. There don't, there's no 13 and just don't, yeah, I don't even want to do 13. And even 12 is... I don't want to do, but yeah, that's yeah, rough. I think I did solo to eleven in vanilla, and, and I exited them out. Yeah, and I I uh, exited classic before uh, before the honor system came in. Yeah, coincidentally I, enough, most of the high warlords that we made immediately quit the game after and never came back. Right. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, yeah, I have a I have a weird take about. PvP in World of Warcraft. I don't think a lot of people agree with me. Maybe I'll, I'm curious what you think about it. Um, but for me, like, so what excited me about WoW Classic was like the old head stuff, like being in a world um, that's not layered, where you see the same people. Um, I've talked about this quality and planet side too that I like too. Is where. It's um, it's you can actually make like a, a community and in a community of communities. Like you see the same guild, you, you, see, you know, you know everybody. There's something to be yeah. said for that. And yeah, like maybe you don't get the perfect balance or the perfect skill. Like maybe one faction is stronger than the other, but it's kind of like a like like a fingerprint on that community, and it's you can find fun in it, and it makes it your own community story. I really like that, and uh, because and I really. For me, as much as I like battle WoW Battlegrounds, I actually do like WoW Battlegrounds. I think just they're fun. Um, if you aren't grinding honor, that is. But um, for me, I liked WoW PvP before honor system came in because it was entirely people trolling and people controlling uh, areas of the world that they wanted to grind mobs in and shit like that. That's all it was. And it made the focus of the game the world itself. You weren't, there weren't any weird incentives for people to act in strange and degenerate ways. If you wanted to be strange and degenerate, you could be, but it came from within you. And that made it more interesting, I think. Um, and th that was one of the reasons why, for me, I, it, was good, it was a good time to quit when I quit. I think I quit like a week before Honor came in. Um, and I watched... I watched with horror the way the, the 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 entire community acted around that, and sort of and people farming flight masters and all the weird ass shit that happened. But you, but you knew, you knew that was what was going to happen. Everybody uh, knew that's what it was going to be. Yeah, and everyone did it anyway. Of course, it shows the power of incentive, man. Um, and uh, you know, battlegrounds are fine, but. They take people out of uh, out of the world, and I I get why they make battlegrounds because people want to PvP in World of Warcraft, and they don't want to sit around and yet they don't want to be prevented from killing dragons or whatever the fucking blasted lands. But um, 
Next Harmony Dragons and Blasted Lands. But I um I think that the drive towards convenience that's put more and more of WoW into like match made instances, especially in the retail version of the game over time, has killed these communities and killed these community footprints. And the primacy of the a community in World of Warcraft to be a unique thing has been replaced by the primacy of the individual in a lot of ways. And the only people who get to have communities anymore are the are the uh, esports athletes, the people who are doing mythic raids, people who are doing high level arenas. Everyone else just gets into a queue. Um, I liken it to like the difference between going to the supermarket and picking out the vegetables and all that stuff and preparing, like getting all the individual components, taking it home and making a dinner, or just going to McDonald's and sitting in the drive thru. You know, it's like the sometimes food is it's different. just easier. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that in a world where both those options are available and you, you can choose them freely, like, yeah, I get it. But again, it comes down to incentives for me. And like, what if you can't afford the time or the money to go buy, buy your own stuff at the, at, at the grocery store? What if, what if you don't have a place to cook? And what if the incentives are all pointing to eating fast food? And, uh, and also, those, those are problems in the real world. These are problems in a made world. Like someone made this, it can be made differently. Um, I'm realizing as I'm talking through this that this leads us to a discussion about skill-based matchmaking. Um, Ooh, do you want to talk about that? I, uh, what is there to say about it? I mean, well, actually, I think you... there, there's a there's a misconception about it. I think that's most normies don't understand okay and what's that i said it it doesn't necessarily so here's the deal with matchmaking in the first place matchmaking only works properly when you have a certain number of people or you have an, an acceptable number of of players right mm -hmm. you have to have a certain amount to meet that threshold to make to be able for the system to to select who's going to be in what match and deem it fair Right. So what do you think happens to the curve when you start getting into the skilled player base? Like you start getting up there. Those people, those numbers kind of dwindle, right? Mm -hmm. It kind of goes down. So now you have fewer of these people that are getting match made. So what ends up happening? Those people start to bleed into the people underneath. It might be just be a little bit. It depends on the game. It, it really depends on what the game uses as a metric for determining a skill. Most match made games that I've played do it simply off wins and losses and right. use an ELO system, right? And that is not always enough context for what is actually happening in the games. But what ends up happening with those games when it's just win or loss is the system gives way too much of the benefit of the doubt to everyone who's getting carried every game, hmm. in my opinion, right? Okay. So like, like take Rainbow Six Siege, for example. When you die in a round, I don't know if you know anything about Siege or not. Very little. Okay, well, if you die in a round, it's, it's basically split. It's a 5v5 on, on a map. Everything's fully destructible. The attacker's job is to plant a bomb. It's like search and destroy in Counter-Strike or whatever. You either <laughs> kill all the other five guys on the other team or you plant the bomb and defuse the bomb. Mm -hmm. So if somebody dies in Siege, right, there's ways for them to be on cameras, on drones that the, each other team utilize, some piece of intelligence or something that's around the map. They do have some interaction with what happened. So if there's a guy who has a lot of deaths, doesn't have many kills, the game's not all about kills, right? So you can give the benefit of the doubt to them in some ways, but in other ways you can't because you can't say the same about the guy who's actually playing, you know, look, he's on a, a flank drone or something or making calls off a piece of utility and someone who's just a shithead and doesn't have a mic and doesn't say anything. They get treated the exact same way. Hmm. But anyway, skill-based matchmaking, you know, everybody clamors for it. But what it ends up doing, if you're ever a good player in a game and you play in a game that has skill-based matchmaking, you're constantly going to be playing with people who you wonder how you are skill how they are on your team because they don't know anything, they don't play well, they can't even put their crosshair on an enemy, and you're playing against five cracked out 16-year-olds who snort, you know, monster energy powder. It's it's crazy. Like why am I playing in this situation, this is not this is not fairness. This is artificial difficulty. 
to to me. So the 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 fairness, if you're a bad player or just an average player, you're never going to notice it. It's just going to be like any other game to you. But the guy who's at the top of the leaderboard carrying your ass against the other team, and it, it can happen on the other team too. Mm-hmm. I have a really good friend who played Destiny and like played Destiny PvP all the time. Okay. And he's, he was talking about how the way they do matchmaking is they just take the, they try to get like an average number, you know, with, with, with whatever rating they have, right? Okay. So if his rating is like 3,000, and the other team has a bunch of other people with this said number, then that that his team's number has to be even with that number. So how do we do that? Let's put a bunch of like 1,500 guys here. So you're having these games where you're playing as if you're in an eSport event for a million-dollar prize every game. Yeah. And it's not enjoyable. Yeah. I, skill-based matchmaking, if, if, there was, if you actually have a game that has a, a very large population... So you have a, a, a nice, vast pool of really, really good players to pull from, which most games don't. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier to do. And if your metric for determining skill is, you know, an actual metric for determining skill or a combination of it's not just wins or losses. Right. Yeah. But I hate it. <laughs> I can it tell. Sucks. It sucks. And the only way you notice it is if you're actually good. If you don't notice it or don't care... Well, you might even notice it too, because in some cases they have the dynamic shit where, you know, you go off for a couple games or you're having a good day and you're feeling it. Well, now you're in a lobby and you're going to get your ass stomped and your fun yeah. is over. I think on on the other side of it, the people who are at the 1500 level, it's like, why am I in a game against this guy? Against this guy who's twice as good as me. Why am I playing this person? I don't have a chance against this person. That's the other side of that frustration. Yeah, because you won too many games in a row, or you got carried to victory yeah. too many games in a row, or you just did a little bit too good last game. Yeah. So it sounds like your bone of contention with skill-based matchmaking is that it doesn't actually achieve its goal of creating matches against equally skilled players, with and against. I, yeah, and I think the main problem with that is we don't... I don't know... Sometimes wins and losses is not good enough to measure if someone is actually good or not. It's not. Right. Sometimes it's not enough. I don't think. What else would you use? I mean, like Siege has a stat called uh, cost, which is uh, kills ob- uh, objective, like plants, uh, trades. If you if you trade, if someone on your team dies and you immediately trade within a certain amount of time, and mm-hmm. survival rate. So th- those are combined all into one stat that gives you a percentage. So the, it basically, what percentage of rounds did you have some meaningful impact in terms of one of these four factors? That's that's a good one that I wish they would use. They don't, hmm. but I think that's a good start. That's a good stat. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, you know, I also don't like skill-based matchmaking, but for me, it's entirely a social thing where I don't like... I don't like it when games incentivize me to treat people like NPCs, I guess. Yeah, you uh, don't want a system that makes you resent your teammates. Yeah. And uh, um, I, I think that there's kind of a fallacy inherent in the idea of, of um, convenient and meaningful social interactions in, in competitive video games. I think yeah, skill based matchmaking is is the McDon- McDonald's example that I gave yeah. for World of Warcraft. It's just it's easy. You press a button like the a, the day of the server browser, my friend, is long gone. Like I we're miss not it, doing dude. that anymore. I fucking miss yeah, it. We're not doing it. There, now you just log into the game and you press matchmake and you're in a game. That's it. People, no server browser. And what makes me sad is that there are people out there who don't even know what that was. Don't even know what the alternative was. Like their whole life has been playing all- online games in this match made way. And it creates a couple of things like so one of the things that stood out to me about what you said, and I've heard you mention this in the past, which made me want to ask you about it, is um, that it makes every single game you play like too fucking sweaty. Like what happened to, I remember playing games in the early mid 2000s, for random first person shooter games, you join a server and like you can have like just a kind of a chill out competitive experience. You're still fighting each other. There's skill imbalances, of course. Um, and you're you you can frag out, you can work on something. If you really want to get sweaty, you there there are pickup communities that organize games, or 
join a community that makes that has a competitive ladder like actually jump in feet two feet first and get that done but the baseline i but the idea of having pub level effort to get ladder level outcome i think is uh something that i i hate to see in modern games and i, I on monday i actually read an article by ex blizzard dev chris kalecki um where he talked about toxicity and and he acknowledged the role the role of of skill-based matchmaking in toxicity but yeah, basically it, it creates the it creates the environment wherein you yeah. are resenting your teammate and do, do you feel like you're you're playing for something and it and it's it's stressful and when you introduce stress to people who are trying to have a casual type of of experience you, it's going to come out right and you also eliminate one of the good things that can happen in player made communities which is self policing which is people making the experiences that they want. Yeah, like back in the day, if you were an asshole in a server and nobody liked you, you're banned. You're not coming back on the server. You go yeah. find another community, man. That's one of the things I liked about, uh, that I do like about Planet Side. And it's one of the things that I, I like the idea of it in WoW Classic with the idea of, of, of one layer WoW Classic servers is like there's a certain amount of connection that's possible that only becomes possible when, when there's some level of accountability. And even if it's just to an internet handle, if you don't see the same person more than once in a play session, ever, accountability means nothing. People act however they want, and as long as the game doesn't penalize them, they can act. There's no incentive for these players to behave in a way that is uh, pleasant for other people. It just creates a whole bunch of crap. And uh, in the article that Kalecki wrote in the, the Monday stream, like he didn't, he, he's kind of wrote off skill-based matchmaking is like, oh, well, we have to have this. Like, this is the way that thing, things are now, so here, how can we work with it? But I say, fuck that. Get rid of it. Yeah, I, I, I don't. It, it's At the end of the day, for me, it's it's a way to put a defense around the Rottweiler. You know, you gotta keep people like me from from feasting on people who are gonna play the game for seven minutes a day and, and microtransactions and, and do all that stuff. So it, 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 I get why it's there. Because every every experience now in the video game has to be completely on rails. Like it, it's it sucks. Like I, I miss the days of like you remember the Game Spy, uh, like server yeah, browsers brother. and that's, yeah, that type of stuff. Like yeah, like that's free Steam. Yeah, give me that. Now you just press matchmake and and you're in a game with people you don't know and will never see again. And that's yeah. that's that. Yeah, you, you give something up. So. In, in order for gaming to get to uh, reach a wider audience, this is kind of some of the sacrifices that have happened, and I just think Which that I think is is one of the worst things that's ever happened for gaming is its mass appeal. I, I mean, in this dimension, I think I agree with you, and I don't know, like maybe there's hope in there's hope for things to go the other direction, or maybe it's just a problem. Maybe this is just a AAA problem. Like maybe we need to look for these problems that get solved by smaller games, but there's a problem with. Um, uh, I think it's just a people problem and an idea problem. I don't think it's to be solved by a, a mega corporation well, or a, or a single developer. You know what bothers me, man? Everyone I know who plays comp who who likes playing multiplayer shooters, everyone I know, rather than playing new games together, they play Call of Duty. Everyone I know does this. Yeah, because you know what you're getting. You know the prepackaged experience. You know that game knows what it does well, and it continues to do that time in and time out. You know the product that you're getting. You know, they might take a little bit of a risk here or there with certain systems that they do, but in general, it's the same formula it's always been. People have nostalgia for that formula that goes all the way back, and they do a lot of things right. As yeah. much as people want to give shit to Call of Duty, and I do. There's a reason why they sell so many copies. It's a mm -hmm. lot of people like it, man. Like they yeah. do some stuff right, and to just poo-poo it outright because it's the popular thing to do. It's like you know the Nickelback of of video games. Like uh. it's so popular to fucking hate on Nickelback, but you know, I mean, I'm gonna admit I like I have some of their songs in my How playlist. How dare you? And yeah. How dare you? I play some Call of Duty from time to time. In fact, most new Call of Duties that come out, I buy and play. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's not so much of a, a rag on Call of Duty. It's like a like a like a, a disappointment in people. Um, 
Because I, I guess one of the places where I think there's hope for some of these old school gaming principles, like like uh, servers that are communities, um, that kind of idea, is like the, not the AAA space, like smaller games. But the problem is that these these um, the way people choose to play games is based often on how many people are playing it, and so. It's it, it's it's kind of similar to this, to the social media platform. You had like the internet back in the, in the early mid two thousands, late nineties. There are a bunch of forums everywhere. People going to different websites. There are a bunch of these small communities. But now we have these few mega communities. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We have YouTube. At the and beginning, I, it was my everybody was on MySpace. MySpace, right? You know? and I I just feel like gaming has gone is, is going in a similar direction, and it bums me out. It's 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 harder to get people to play. Games that aren't the Facebook of games, games that aren't the the uh, the Twitter of games. Um, I, th I think I think YouTube and Twitch have a lot to do with that. I yeah. think because yeah, because people see like you know you see all these success stories of people, and you know how do they do it? They make content. You get your gameplay out there, and if it's a game that people aren't playing, they don't care, man. They they're not going to tune in, like. Look at look at the demographics for Planet Side. Like, how hard uh -huh. is it to to become a big anything in Planet Side? Like, like Shocker made partner on Twitch through Planet Side. That's crazy. Like, that was a miracle. Like, who else is doing that? Yeah. Like, who who else is coming and having all the all these viewers that are organically grown from this community? Mm -hmm. And it's like people. You can watch. You know, you can do all the Planet Side content you want, but people, the interest isn't there. I'm sorry. It's mm -hmm. it just. People aren't watching it. And and people nowadays, like I'm friends with a lot of people like no, like in real life, no, none of my friends actually play PC games, which is super weird. They're all like mega casual, like console, like get off work, go home, drink a beer. And that's all. So having a conversation with yeah. them, with me is super difficult, but that's everyone. And what the, yeah. what do they go? They go on YouTube and they look up the highlights of oh, fastest world's fastest nuke. And that's, that's the stuff they want to emulate and they think you know if i'm gonna ever make money or be successful or do what people want to watch people want to watch the thing that's the most popular yeah it's it's i don't think it's that you know it's i don't think it's that complicated like you what's popular is what people are gonna gravitate towards and there's a few you know there's the games that stick out you know the big mega games that they it seems like they make the same game every year and it make a billion dollars and it's just that's just the way it is. I think like, yeah, yeah. I don't know uh -huh. how you, I don't know how you deal with that because to get people to play every, every couple of years, we have this new so-and-so says greatest, you know, it's going to bring arena shooters back and it gets a little bit of hype. And then it's, it's diabolical. It, it, Damn exactly. It. Damn it's it. It's dead in six months and no one cares. I like, oh, that is a doornail. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't, I don't know what you do. Like, I'm I'm not sure if I want to take this conversation. I guess uh, it's I, I I always this is just a part of my personality. I I don't understand people who don't want to dive deeper. So, and I I apply that to games too. Like I don't understand. It's it's culture. It's everyone's time. Everyone's time is so goddamn important to them that how dare you inconvenience me by wasting five more seconds of my time than I think your application or your content is worth. Like that whole thing is just, I, I think we, we started out talking about, about stuff like that, but people no. are so damn self-important, man. Like you're not that busy. You know, I know a lot of these people and they pretend that they're also busy. Oh, bullshit. You're not, you have time to sit down and watch something and have a conversation, but you're lazy. You're intellectually dishonest or lazy and you don't want to. It's okay. Just admit it. But just don't tell me that, you know, don't give me this other crap, man. <laughs> like, and I get it. Like people, do, the, the stressors of, of, of life in the world, I just don't yeah. want to deal with anything. I just want to turn off. I get it. Yeah. But, you know, at, at some point you have to use your brain. You know, you have to use your brain so it doesn't turn into mush. I wonder about that. I guess um, I have this this kind of idea virus get implanted in my mind not not too long ago. You got it where, from the vaccine. Fucking Bill Gates. I'm going back for round two next week. 
Uh, so I, um, but it talked about incentives, man. And I, I, I've started seeing a lot of the things you were just talking about, about people, um, not being entirely honest and just doing the things that are simple and easy and expedient and lazy. Um, I, I've heard laziness actually called a, like a, an evolutionary adaptation. Like there's, there's, there's good reason to be lazy. If it, people should spend their effort wisely, right. Um, and not just jump into everything that, 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 that that's out there. I, I get that. And like incentives, like what are people incentivized to do? And uh, the, the talk that I heard this in was Julia Gale, if she was talking about um, uh, motivated, motivated reasoning, which is a, a phrase she created that it kind of describes the behavior you see where people uh, hear an idea and they engage with it um, in either an attack or defense posture rather than trying to understand the idea and, and understand its truth. And, um, but she presented this, this study of um, people who had different politically motivated opinions about climate science. And what the study did is it, is it um, aimed to educate, I can't remember exactly what the mechanism of the study was, but what it, what it concluded is that more education about climate science doesn't result in people converging on a singular truth. Rather, it results in people becoming more firmly entrenched in whatever their political opinion is. And it's, and she suggested that a reason this is is because uh, people are incentivized to stick to one opinion or another. And that yeah, but, educating but people as, doesn't change that yeah, incentive. It's seen as a, a form of, somehow a form of weakness if you change your mind. Or if your answer is, I don't know. You know, right. it's, you don't want to be seen as someone who flip flops because that's God, that's, you know, that's the worst, most horrible thing ever to change your mind with new information, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and like, I, I've, I've been taking the, the brush of incentive and been like, does this go on planet side? Does this go on world of Warcraft? Does this go on this behavior? Um, you know, even like down to how do my wife and I figure out how to take the trash out? And why do I always seem to be the one who ends up doing it? <laughs> uh, simple stuff like that. And I think there's some real truth there. Um, so I, it's made me more sympathetic about my friends who don't, don't treat the gaming hobby, their, their, their gaming hobby with like a lot of, a lot of thought. It's just like a turn the brain off thing. Like, like you mentioned with, with, with your buds who, who want to grab a beer, sit on the couch, and just frag out for a little while. And uh, it's because, like, in terms of what you get out of the experience, like, that's where the incentives are. It's in, like, the first few minutes. It's in the the the, the short touch, like, once a day. Um, I guess the real question is, why why do I feel differently about it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's not necessary for you to ask yourself that, you know, you just, it is the way it is. Like, that's just, just the way you are. You don't have to analyze, why do I feel differently about this? Well, and just let those people have that thing and do your thing. That's how yeah, I well, feel anyway. That's what we're doing. That's why you've been at this for three hours. And yeah, yeah like. I got, uh, I got nothing to do tomorrow. I, well, I'm actually getting fiber installed tomorrow, so. Hey, that's exciting. Yeah. Nice, nice, man. So now I can play games with bad tick rate on a better internet connection. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there are a few more things we can talk about, man. Um, I guess there's a World of Warcraft thing that I didn't button up with you, which was uh, uh, fresh. Um, do you think... Blizzard is going to give us fresh classic? Uh, I think it would have been a mistake to do it now because people are, of course, very tired of it. But the I was I was hoping, as someone who wants fresh, I was hoping that you know we might have the option here where instead of oh you get the your your character that you're raiding on in Nax Ramus right now, you get to play him forever and the game just stays in the current state. Like that never interested me. Who wants that? Uh, 
I, I don't know. I guess people, there is a subsection of the player base that, you know, they do role play. Like the server that I was on, sure on on the west coast is was an rp pvp server and it was very interesting for someone like me to be on that kind of server Mm -hmm. but uh i I don't know like there's there's people out there that that do they are those people that that get talked about like it's for the journey not the destination right Yeah, yeah those those people definitely exist out there still and i think this came up in conversation with with ian Mm-hmm. not that long ago but th- you know I, he's saying like these people exist man like just because you don't see them like and that preacher you, you'd su- yeah you'd be out. surprised how many people that actually do this and you know yeah. that's fine but um again it's too soon uh maybe in a year maybe two years mm-hmm. i think i would like to really see a like seasonal like the the problem with people that people have with facing the idea of a new fresh is is it going to be, if it's exactly the same as what you just did, then I don't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Yeah. Right. You don't want to do, I don't want to do molten core in the first month and Anixia, and I get to wait mm-hmm. eight months before I get to do Blackwing Lair. Like, mm-hmm. no, it needs to be like a, like a lot of people has, have suggested doing a seasonal, a seasonal fresh yeah. where it's, you do like maybe three months of, of every section of content and then mm-hmm. you just move on and on and on and then. You can do that forever. I mean, there's been people playing private servers since Christ, you know, Burning Crusade originally yeah. came out yeah. that wanted to stay in vanilla. So it's not like the interest isn't there. Yeah. I learned a little bit about um, Path of Exile leagues um, and how they basically reset people's progress for each league and they change stuff about the game. They introduce new things. Um, I think that that idea applied to Classic WoW is kind of, kind of pretty interesting. Like, yeah, what if, we can play with it like the things that we've done already like yeah. i think in china they do a thing where they drop world buffs automatically in a city every hour huh like you know because china china does their own thing and in some ways they do a lot of things better yeah it could be could be because you remove well, if you do that you remove all that friction of you know i gotta go out and get ganked and wait four hours for this zg heart to drop and yeah. you know he might not drop it or he's gonna get grief doing it like i World buffs, man. Yeah, um, or like with uh, with like punched up difficulty for raids, like they they could do that too. There's yeah, you could experiment could with with values and just so many things you could play yeah. around with. That I was very disappointed as someone who was like, yeah, no changes is great and all, but there's some things that you know we've we've come a long way as as like a gaming culture. Like it's okay yeah. to change some of these things. Like it just makes sense to like that's yeah. okay. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. Um, when thinking about Classic Fresh, one of the things that pings my mind, and I have to be honest about it, is like looking at it from the perspective, like if, I, if I'm Activision Blizzard, what do I want? And I think what I want is to not create more versions of World of Warcraft to maintain. And I see that as a motivation behind like the $35 clone fee. Like, Yeah, but are you going to use that realization to determine that Hey, maybe there's a a big problem with the game that we're making now at retail. Maybe if that is not a wake up call, I think for them, and they don't use it as that, then I think it's all a waste of time. Well, my, because that should tell you right there. Yeah. Let me think about this. I have a take on this based on my experience playing Shadowlands, but I need another two minute break. You cool with that? I, I've been out of water for an hour and a half. Uh, I gotta been. get a new new bottle. I've been keeping hydrating. I need that caffeine drip. We'll be right back, folks. Okay, we're back. So we're just talking about wow and its capacity for change. The thought that I wanted to remember that I think I have remembered is uh, you were asking about um, whether or not Blizzard has internalized the lessons of what people want from Classic and how they can apply those. And whether we can expect to see like that level of self-awareness. Um, I don't know what exactly the lessons they learned, but th- that was something that I was excited about when I made that video about WoW Classic back in 2019. And I-, I-, I actually dipped my toes back into retail for the first time in 10 years, and I played Shadowlands for a few months. Um, it was fun. Uh, the game is super different. I'm not sure how long it's been since you've played retail, but super different. 
these days. And um, part of what excited me about it is when they announced Covenants. So do you know what the Covenant system is? Yeah, it's like choosing a, a faction and you get abilities based off of that and everything. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, am, I, do, I do follow what's going on, so I'm sure. semi-aware of what's happening. Yeah, and it's a, it's a choice that you make, which is semi-permanent. You can change it, but you lose a lot of progress. It's a pain in the ass. Um, and uh, it has power wrapped up in it, and it has cosmetics wrapped up in it, and it has lore and questing and story built up in it. it, it all the, almost all the pillars of WoW. Um, and one of the outcries when it was first announced is that, well, how come you, I don't want to choose between like the aesthetic choice and the flavor choice versus the player power. I want to be able to have the powers that I need to choose the talents I need, the build that I need moment to moment and have the lore choices kept separate, you know, the questing choices kept separate and, um, Blizzard held firm on it and they said, nope. We're wrapping these back up. And that was one of the, the, the triggers that got me interested in Shadowlands because to me it signaled that Blizzard is trying to play around with bringing the RPG back into the retail version of WoW. Um, I'm not sure how well it's working. Um, I like the well, Covenant. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why why that being like the RPG element of it was your class and your your abilities and your talents and all that, and why that has to be outsourced to other systems in the game now. Well, it probably because people already have made their, made those choices, and, and they, they've had things like uh, race and faction change tokens in the game for years. How do you go back on that? Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not trying to say that they did it well. Um, I'm just saying that that to me suggested that they did learn that there's an appetite for that, that they were not, that, that they've been getting away from. And you can see if you listen to like the Asmund goals of the world, like the preaches of the world, you can see why they'd get away from it. Because the overpowering influencers who are all playing the game for six to eight hours a day um, don't want to they're accustomed to that level of convenience and power and they are not they don't see the value in getting away from it um modern wow is much more it feels a lot more esportsy than it used to with the focus on individuals rather than communities like we we're talking about before and uh i actually don't think that blizzard can change that but uh, no i've yeah it's that's it's a radical change to go back on on you know a decade's worth of design decisions and this this rut that they're in of just system yeah. system bloat every like I, I, it's another reason I can't I just can't get back into it. It's just too different yeah. from what I'm used to, and I'm I'm way too used to what what vanilla is now to to even entertain that. And that, maybe that's me being a lazy and not wanting to learn. But I, I don't know. I pick your battles. Just, yeah, I mean, I, I'm already playing. I'm playing one version of your game. Like, just let that be enough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, it's interesting. When I got back into both versions of WoW, classic and retail, in the last couple of years, is the first time I've played the game without the intention of playing it forever. You know what I'm talking about? Like going in with an endpoint in mind. Um, yeah, that's. I I think I think people should do that with most games. Yeah. Like I, I don't think it's healthy to just go in and be like, "Hey, well, I'm just gonna play this forever." It's like, how do you know that? Like, mm -hmm. kind of have like I don't know. It sometimes it doesn't work out right. Like, but what, with me, like it'll have like certain things happening in my life at the time where I'm like in a, in a different situation where that's going to change in a few months and be like, well, let me go pick this up and I'll, I'll see what I want to do for this amount of time. But not everybody's like that. But like if a new game comes out, I expect to play it maybe a month, you know, mm -hmm. and then you, you have the, you still have those core games that you play that I'm going to play these games year and year on end because they have, you know, a schedule for releasing content and it, it's continual like that. Like, like for mm -hmm. me, it was planet side siege now for five years. Like, other than that, you know, that's, that's really it for me. 
for it. Yeah, and you can only have so many of those games yeah. keep you busy. Yeah, it's I don't know these people people that expect to to play a game and be like, oh, I'm going to play this for the rest of my life. You might, I mean, you might be the only one left playing it. But, MMO you know. shoppers, bro. See, I stopped shopping. Like I tried so many. I think it was uh, there was a Warhammer MMO that came out in mm-hmm. like the mid two thousands or something. I tried that. I played some Guild Wars, the first one. Mm-hmm. Just all these, all these other things, and they just nothing. I didn't like them compared to the original WoW, and now it's just like I'm not. I see all these like, like Ashes of Creation, all these other things that are supposed to be coming out. And I'm just like, I kind of just want to play WoW. Like, I, I, it's unfair, right? I should, I should, I feel like I should maybe give them an opportunity to earn my business, and maybe I'd find a new game that I like. But it's just like the formula for WoW just works for me, and I, it's, it is lazy, you know. I just don't, I want to play anything else when it comes to MMOs. Sure. You know, when I talked to Shockter last week, we talked about his experience of Planet Side, and like for him. Like part of the reason he comes back to it is because it's kind of like um it's like where his his friends hang out. It's like a, a way for him to connect with people. Um, I think a lot of people, like me included, use games that way these days. It's part of the reason I mainly focus on multiplayer experiences. Yeah, um, unless the game unless the game has like a really robust way to play it solo, like which most games don't. Yeah. Uh, once my friends stop playing it, like I mostly lose interest in it. Do you find that usually you stop first or your friends stop first? I feel like I, I persevere a little bit more. Like they're more wishy washy with Ready stuff. To move on. Like, yeah. Like because there's always something that they want to go back to that they've played forever. And it's ah. just like I, I, there's always an excuse to not play something when you have that stable of, of things that are safe for you. Yeah. It's a real crazy world to be making new games in like you're mentioning your list like for me the list is planet side 2 guild wars 2 and like those two like for how deep i like to go i actually have to have a hard time doing both at once um it's very difficult for me uh i I really in my heart i'm a mono gamer but i'm finding the more i do content like the more i'm incentivized to cast a broad uh uh it's have a broad perspective of things that are going on as much as I can. You can't be. You need that perspective. I mean, you need both, though, I think. Like, w- one of the things I've heard you talk about, I'm, I'm going to relate this, and I mean, this is fair, uh, with Planet Side and people's opinions about, like, balance in Planet Side. It's like, um, you know, why should I listen to anyone who's A, not that great at Planet Side, and B, hasn't played other games that are similar to Planet Side? Like, if you haven't actually experienced what not planet side is like, why should, why should your opinion be worthwhile? And I think by having these other experiences, like for me, trying classic, trying Shadowlands, like yeah, I I didn't tunnel into a, a, another experience as deep as I could have, but I those perspectives have value, um, and um, I, I guess the trick is to not get into this space where you're not learning anything from the experiences you're having. Um, wh- why do I want to learn things from playing video games? I have no idea, but I do. It's this insane demon inside of me. Well, I, you can. Like, I mean, I think it's that easy. Like, there's there's a lot to learn. It's a, the video games are a giant social experiment, right? You yeah. can learn plenty about people. You're always learning about how people think you know why people behave a certain way there's there's a lot to learn so I, I, if you can't fault yourself i don't fault you for that it's it's just as normal or acceptable i think as as any other you know road that you would go down and trying to learn i think i don't thanks. know thanks thanks um i appreciate you saying that sometimes i feel like i'm unique in that no, I it's to, it's very valid. <laughs> I, I I go to Reddit and I feel like, what are these people doing? I go to Reddit is a Reddit is was, a cesspool. So even like a lot, a lot of like like, like opinions I hear from people on Twitch and YouTube. Sometimes I'm like, you know that feeling you get when someone is speaking on something because they they feel they should speak on it, rather than because they're saying something that's 
really within them to say. There's Oh yeah, I, I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're doing some of that right now. Um I don't know. Uh at this point I'm getting a little wishy washy and personal here. So let me let me pull this back out. Um so I think we talked about WoW. Um it's the biggest MMO ever. It'll always be a topic of conversation in this space. And uh, it's complicated as shit, man. We'll have to see what happens with it. Um, as for me, I'm not playing Burning Crusade. I knew this from the very beginning. Same reason I stopped Great. playing playing Vin Great playing choice. Classic. Great choice. Just done it all before. And uh, if you want to go back and upgrade those uh, True Strike true strike shoulders you can always venture back into the land of uh, the current patch in azeroth just a leather hater my friend <laughs> um all right well thinking about other topics we can we can touch on like some um, i know it's been a while since the serious raid um i don't feel like i necessarily want to talk about stream sniping stuff but is there something you want to talk about uh, in a way, sure. What do you want to say? Uh, in, in regards to what he did, uh, you know, I actually, I was perusing, I was looking at his YouTube channel the other day, Commander and series, huh? yeah, and I noticed, you know, I just so happened to sort by newest comments first, and I real, I recognized that he hadn't really done much. I had, I noticed that I hadn't really seen him on Twitch for a little while. I don't know if he was taking a break or something, but there was like two workout fitness streams or something, and then yeah. there wasn't anything for a few days, so. Uh, I don't know if that's normal or not. I'm not a regular viewer or anything, but then I checked the YouTube and it'd been like a couple, like might, like three weeks since the last video or something like that, which I'm not sure if that's normal, but with everything that, that transpired, I thought maybe he would say something or maybe not. But then I looked in the comments of the latest video and sorted by newest first. And there's all these people just, man, they're upset. Hmm. What are they like, upset about? Yeah. They're upset that he used his observer cam to to stop a bunch of shitlord scumbags from griefing a a community event. So I don't know if these people were regular viewers of his or they just happened to go to his channel and say that. But the way some of them spoke to me, it seemed like they were longtime uh, followers of his. And okay. I didn't expect I, it's something I also didn't really think about. It's like, well, some some of his longtime followers might be kind of like aggravated by what happened. And I wonder how he would deal with that. But hmm. if, if you want my take on it, Sirius did exactly what any normal human being would do if they had the power to do it. And I'm glad he did what he did. And all the people that are engaged in that type of behavior can, I mean, Get a life. Stuff it, man. Like, get a life. Like, you're stream sniping <laughs> in Planetside, a, a basically dead. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt Rel's feelings, but a, a mostly niche, irrelevant niche. game in in 2021, and you're finding the time to stare at somebody else's screen and try to grieve. And don't give me the shit about. Well, they saw the the heat map, and there was a... no man. So I'm glad he did what he did. Uh, great job. You know, the plus one for the good guys, right? Mm -hmm. Now, on to the other topic of, you know, I watched your interview last week with with our good friend Shockter. Oh, and one th one thing that's that stuck out to me was just how difficult it is for that man to just denounce stream sniping. You know, <laughs> he, he can't come out and say it. And it's really it's really annoying because I, I have a real bone to pick here because. Okay. As someone who did not take five years off of the game and just disappear forever, some of us had to stay and persevere, and some of us were streaming every day. And some of us were harassed and stream sniped every single day that we fired up our stream, hmm. and it was constant. And some of the stuff that came from it was getting docked, having people in my family message on social media about you know everything. It goes a long way. So I think it's a very ignorant take to go from saying that, well, just because I turned the situation into a positive situation, well, that's the way it is for everybody. Well, sorry, man, that's not how it works for everybody. And I know of quite a few people who have suffered intense harassment to include real life stuff that, you know, when you apologize for that kind of stuff, that's what it leads to. And that's very aggravating to me that, that someone with that kind of standing in the community would make an ignorant statement like that. Just because you can turn it into something positive you know, I don't, 
maybe that's fine for you and your friend. But if I'm playing a stream, I don't want to be harassed like that. I, I'm not consenting to it whatsoever. It's a totally different story, especially when it leads to very weird antisocial behavior offline on the game, which a lot of us have dealt with. And it's it's some of it's scary, man. Mm -hmm. And I, I know you're probably not dealing with that, but just wait. Make an enemy or two in the community and then just wait and keep streaming every day. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say on it. Very ignorant take. Okay. Yeah. Let me think about that for a second. I'd like to add, too, it's, it's also very convenient that, you know, of course you would apologize for that behavior because, you know, you kind of harbor a lot of these shitbags that engage in that kind of behavior. You know, I won't go into specifics, but yeah, it, it's, it's the truth. Okay, so if you don't you don't want to deal with that that truth, then that's fine. If that's what you guys are into is is cheating, which stream sniping, that's what it is. It's cheating. I don't care what you say. You know, you say you say the option is to put a delay on. Well, I don't know if you've ever had a stream or a successful stream, but when you put a delay on, it can often destroy the chat interaction. And yeah. Planet Side 2 is not really necessarily a game where a delay does anything. Yeah. Okay, because if, if the person has the information of where you are at one single fight and you're not hopping around a lot and you're some fights, you might be there 20, 30 minutes. Right. So they have free reign to do that. I will say, like, there was a period where I logged in every day and I was streaming and I would get stream sniped by the same air to ground ESF every single day for two years. Fuck. And what and what does does anyone care? No, they don't care because it's me and people don't like me. Even though it's against the terms of service to harass people in this way, is Rel ever going to do anything about it? No, because I criticize them about the game. So it's it's okay for your organic streamers that have come up in your platform and in your game to get harassed endlessly for years at a time. But as soon as a big streamer comes to the game, like Lyric or Summit, oh, oh, oh here comes Andy. He's sitting up in his chair and he's going to start moderating everything. Like, give me a break, man. You got to do better. You know, I'm not the guy to respond to that, probably. But I think that's pretty well stated, man. Um, and and to, and to clarify, I, I like Shockter. He's super entertaining. I mm -hmm. still enjoy watching his stream. But the, the, the drop-off point for me was was on, on that. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, you just lose me there, man. Because I've, mm -hmm. I've experienced too much with that, and I'm friends with people who have experienced too much with that. So yeah. it, yeah, that's what I have to say about it. Yeah. One of my biggest difficulties with the whole, the whole serious situation personally was how ready the community was to accept the idea that Sirius created a problem, but the stream snipers didn't. How ready the community seemed to be to forgive or forget the stream sniping act and to focus on the person with the big name rather than yeah it's, it it chaps my ass too is the victim yeah. blaming here with that kind of stuff like well you had it coming you know you shouldn't have been wearing a short skirt like like come on man yeah um and yeah i, I was i was i was curious too about shocker's take on this when i when i talked to him um i think his it sounded like to me like his perspective was like well how has stream sniping affected me and he's like a He's a charismatic personality streamer. Planet Side playing the game for him is secondary to being to entertaining people. He said that out, out loud. And for him, turning it stream snipe into an entertainment is just like kind of a natural thing to do. I'm sure he struggled yeah. with it at times. But cool. um but I, I, but I, I let, do agree. Sorry, go ahead. But but let you know, and, and you know what else helps to not get stream snipe is we had this conversation earlier, is to just sit and surf pop all day long. In every fight you're in. And that kind of helps a lot too. But when you're someone like me or Vert or Sopdogger, who's constantly going to underpop fights, you make yourself an even more vulnerable target. Sure. So I don't want to I don't want to hear this shit about, oh well, it doesn't it, you know, they're just not doing it to me. It's just like, well, look at how you play, man. I know that might take some, you know, we've had this conversation on this individual show way earlier. 
but yeah, you, you kind of fall into that. I play like a scumbag type of thing. And then I also authorize scumbag behavior. Like it's a problem. Hmm. So talking about like, yeah. Um, and someone like Shakhtar is in a position to, um, and that's the problem. To, that's, the, that's exactly the problem because he has the, the viewership and he has the reach there and he's, influencing a lot of people and when you're like well it's okay for me then what do you think a lot of impressionable 18 to 21 year olds are gonna think yeah no, i don't think it's fair yeah yeah i mean i think that uh the, I'm, I'm i'm not sure i'm ready to make the connective arguments about like you know surfing over pop if, if you're okay with, with, with surfing over pop, then you're okay with stream sniping and that kind of stuff. But um, I can see why you'd be upset about shock letting the stream snipers kind of go without comment. I mean, one thing about him that we about shock that about that conversation with shock that really it came away with too is that like he um, You, did you break down? You need some oil can? Well, I'm not sure what I want to say exactly. And so I'm taking I, I, pause. What I, what I will say is that it, the one good thing about him is is that you can have a conversation with him. You know? yeah, yeah, you can. And he he's was very clear when I talked to him that he really doesn't like the drama, which is interesting because if you if you just skim his content, um, it, it seems like he's he's comfortable with it at the moment, right? Um, but then there's a desire to steer away from it. And I, I think probably, I, I would guess, and he could corroborate this or not, that um, there's a desire to steer away from making that content live on his channel any longer than it needs to um, with the series. I, I don't know what stuff, it was, stuff. but like, maybe, maybe he just happens to find himself in it. And he was also getting really big at a time when there was a lot of drama happening. Yeah. So, and he was talking about it and reporting it. And it's just like, do you, man, do you want to be the keem star of planet side? Like, I, I don't necessarily think so. Yeah. And I know he's, he's talked about it too. He's kind of an introvert, right? So having all that, e there's even stuff like when, when I've done all this drama and shit, you just are like, okay, that's enough. Get, get it away. Like kind of, yeah. you know, you it, don't, it, you don't want that. It, it takes on a life of his own. And one of the things that, yeah. that shock talked about is how, after after sharing what he thought about like for example the uh, about outfit wars people started looking to him as like the negativity merchant and they yeah, wanted him to channel the all thing. their rage that's the same that's why i have any following is they come to me for that right but the instant that i stop agreeing with them that's it you're just you're just you're a bad guy you're toxic cancel this guy like but yeah. you can't, but I know that, that the way I behave, you know, that's at some point, that's a conscious decision, right? It's a cost that, that, that you're willing to pay to be direct and honest and a yes. bit of an asshole. Yes. You feel like it. But, but if you're not that person and it, you just fall into it, I can very easily see how now it's like, oh, I, I you know, I, I yeah. want to step back from that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think you make a good argument, dude. If Shock, uh, I wonder if he'll watch us on his stream sometime and get, tell us what he thinks. I'm sure this will get plenty of hate watches. So <laughs> some he'll some it'll get back to him somehow. But yeah, no, I mean it, it is what it is. I'm with you, dude. Like I, I think that like the culture that bothers me, and um, I, I don't think I don't, I don't think Shock um, uh, perpetuate this perpetuates this generally speaking and certainly not intentionally if it happens at times like these um but i see in the planet side community uh regardless of him or not is this culture of like anonymity is for me accountability is for other people and this culture of um my actions are excusable because of my intent but the other person's actions are not excusable because of their effect um and it's this 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 like almost like like these power games that are getting played or people are trying to find out what power they can wield to form the narrative to to take people out 
and you see it wielded against all the big names in the community. Um, I I am I, well, I'm not lucky to avoid stream sniping. Honestly, I don't piss a lot of people off. It's just my personality, and I don't play as much as most people get stream sniped. So it's not a big deal for me. Um, but hearing the picture you painted about it makes me see the apology, uh, the ambiguity about not coming down on those things as a worse thing than even I originally thought it was. And I originally was not a fan of it. And Shock's in the chat now. He's been alerted. Hey, Shock. You probably got to rewind a few minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, like, it's funny. I was talking a few minutes ago about being in a position where you feel like you have to say something, but you don't have anything to say. I feel like that's the position I'm in right now. I'm just thinking about it. That's fair. I think I said enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, what else should we talk about, Lex? Well, we've got a uh, three-game series against the uh, New York Yankees coming up this weekend. Uh, Baseball. I checked the standings, and yeah. I had thought that the the your favorite team was having a really shitty year, honestly, but it appears they've clawed their way back up to some place that my team will never be again for the rest <laughs> of the season. But, hey, at least the guy threw a no-hitter, but then you'll never hear about... It's, I'm tired of it. Like, I, I try to be objective. Like, in baseball, is like the one sport where I, I actually will fall behind a team. You know, yeah. yeah. Just for the, the the pain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I think everybody everybody needs to have a bad sports franchise in their life at some point because it puts a lot of things in perspective. But <laughs> it humbles you, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> But man, like I, I, they do, apparently they do these uh, MLB games like on YouTube, like once a week or something. Yeah. That I, I didn't know about. I haven't, like I said, we've talked, I haven't watched a baseball game in years, but Me too. I went and looked and there's a bunch, of course, there's a bunch of Yankees games and they pulled up a, uh, a starting lineup for, for the diamond. And it, uh -huh. the people I have, who the hell are these people on your and team? Who are these like, kids? I, I don't know any of these people. Like, <laughs> yeah, I I stopped watching. Let me think. Okay, so we, we talked about this offline. Uh, I was uh, I grew up in Connecticut, and I was a New York Yankees fan. And right up until the point where actually what happened was, um, my family moved uh, out of the state um, in the late '90s, and I stopped being able to watch games. And so at that point, I just eventually stopped being a fan. Like. I mean, I, I probably, if I had to pick a team to like, I'd probably still pick the Yankees because that's kind of what's imprinted on my, my central nervous system uh, from living in the area. And uh, yeah, they are doing better than, than your team uh, in the AL East. Uh, the poor old Orioles with their under 500 record, the only team in the AL East under 500. <laughs> yeah. Some, I mean, if everybody's a winner, somebody has to be the loser, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know. It's just bad. Yeah, man. Just, the owner. I think I mentioned to you something about the owner. Uh, good old Pete Angelos, who sued the tobacco companies in Maryland and won a whole bunch of money and then went in. I didn't know this, but Tom Clancy is one of the, the people he went in with. No? And they purchased the team. And they have done absolutely nothing with it ever since. And that's don't sad. want to spend money. And when they do spend money, they get overpriced free agents who are way past their prime. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. They were even yeah, talking man. about uh, moving, like maybe perhaps moving the team, which didn't make any sense to me because, you know, the people here love that team and the park is an iconic park and, mm -hmm. you know, the history of the team here. Camden Yards. I don't know. Everything's about money, though. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so, like, when it comes to modern baseball, man, I'm just clueless, like, but for yeah, some, I've, I've been something... out, but yeah, yeah, I keep up, and the they are. I think they are actually trying to. They're doing the commissioner Manfred. His sole goal in life is to try to, I guess, modernize the game and try to reach some 
some new following or something. But there, there was 144,000 people watching on YouTube today. I think it was a Cardinals and Brewers game. Like at okay. two o'clock in the afternoon. Like what was like? What the hell? Where are all these people? Like that seems pretty good. That's a lot. Yeah. Spare the next QC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I have a warm place in my heart for baseball. It's mainly because it's the sport I grew up with. Because the sport my dad, my dad loved. Um, and you know, I played baseball when I was a kid, right up until the point where I found a different hobby because I was too fat to run around the bases. And uh, they just put those guys at first base, or your DH. No, that's what they did with me too. Uh, but I, I got to a point where there there was like a JV to varsity transition, and the coach was like, "Hey, Greg, like I know you can do some stuff, but you just got to take off the weight, man." And I did, but then I decided to do something different because uh, I got involved in uh, in the theater arts and mu- and mu- doing musicals and choir stuff, and everyone loved me for that. So that's what I went to go do instead. It was easier. Um, and, but I think like for me in 2021, baseball has been just tripping into these YouTube videos about all these little stories in the game and all the little, like, I think one of the the ones that jumped out at me first was, um, how much everyone hates Alex Rodriguez, um, who joins, he is rehabilitated like f- say what you want about how many people hated him but if you compare him to someone like barry bonds like it's night and day yeah in what like, way you hear, you hear nothing from barry bonds nothing yeah. he's one of the most prolific hitters whether he cheated or not i you know one of the most prolific hitters whether of all time, he cheated he, or not he's just well yeah obviously but he just vanished into the periphery and Alex Rodriguez, you know, he's on MLB network and he's calling games and, you know, he's always in a high profile and he definitely cheated too, but you know, he's not a pariah apparently. Yeah. It's crazy too, because he definitely screwed over a lot of people. And oh, yeah. the thing that I heard about bonds is that he just, people, people didn't like him. Like they didn't like playing with him. He was just a dick. Yeah. He's a dick. But I mean, I don't know. Um, should he be in the Hall of Fame? Well, that's a fucked up question because in the ni- it turns out in the nineties, nearly everyone was juicing. Have you seen the videos now of the all the pitchers that are apparently cheating? Yeah. Oh, I saw this great video about is it is it Trevor Bauer? Trevor like, Bauer and Garrett Cole and all them. Yeah, what a fantastic little drama that's going on where pitchers are are using um, like substances to increase their grip strength on the baseball. Right. Which the improves rate their overall. spin rate, which makes them a lot harder to hit. Like apparently, improving your spin rate is a more reliable way to become unhittable than improving your your speed. Velocity, yeah. right? And um, it, it's a stat that no one really tracked until pretty recently, is my understanding. But like Trevor Bauer was was complaining about his ex college roommate Garrett Cole cheating using substances to get his spin rate up, and and then. <laughs> I probably to the point where, like, uh, the the suggestion I heard in the video is that part of the reason that the Yankees signed Cole was to get whatever he was using to improve his grip strength on the baseball. Um, there's this, like, accepted illicit cheating going on among baseball pitchers, yep. and Bauer trolled everyone by throwing one inning in a game where he used something and improved his spin rate dramatically and, like, struck off his side. I mean, he, he was a good inning for him. And uh, apparently he's gone to the dark side now. Apparently he's just like yeah. one in Rome, and it's just this big thing going on. And uh, I, I saw the thing about the Astros cheating scandal with the calling out pitches. And man, I guess it, it just paints a picture. Like I, I think my 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 youthful love for the game is I can't decide if it's being enhanced or destroyed, but it's definitely one of those two things. Yeah, I, I, that was a big thing for me too. Is like everyone everyone's cheating like so if if everyone's cheating and if it's for my entertainment like if you look back to the mcguire sosa in that summer when they were duking it out like the entertainment value of that was unlike anything right yeah it was so needed to after the the player strike in 94 man that was yeah and then it's it's like at the end of the day as a casual fan right you're like well they did it for my entertainment. Well, they did it for their paychecks, but it was entertaining as hell for me. Uh-huh. 
okay, so we do all that, and then you accumulate all these stats, and then it's like, well, time to go. Let's see if you're eligible for the Hall of Fame. Like people like Roger Clemens, like Roger Clemens is a Hall of Fame pitcher in my mm -hmm. books. Like they, they all have to go in the Hall of Fame. Like you, you can't. I, I, I don't know. I think some people are like that. Some of the writers, uh, the Hall of Fame writers, and the the people that vote. But mm -hmm. man, like if if you're gonna take the stance that Barry Bonds shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, like yeah, what have we been doing the last thirty years? Like to yeah. just blot out the whole damn era, like. Yeah, it, it seems to to suggest that Hall of Fame voting is more about whether they like the people than whether or not they're and deserving. The, yeah, that's, and, that's a problem. And uh, like I, I saw a, a video actually just earlier today about Kevin Brown, one of the, the, the most effective aces of the 90s, you remember, um, was has been overlooked by the Hall completely despite his dominance because, and the suggestion of the video is that he was found taking PEDs in the 2000s after his 90s dominance kind of was fading. And um, and he wasn't as strong of a pitcher. But he has Hall of Fame numbers. It's just that he was kind of a dick and no one liked him. And he was caught using PEDs. But some people, but if you get caught using PEDs and people like you, it's okay. I don't know. Unless you're, you're Alex Rodriguez and you get kind of semi sort of caught. Yeah, he got caught. Right. And people don't like you, but then they like you again. I, I, I don't know, man. People forget. But I, yeah, people, people are very willing to forgive, right? But only, only if you're not, you know, the Barry Bonds type or the other Clemens type. If if you're charismatic. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you if you if you butter them up and warm them up, they'll they'll come around eventually. But mm -hmm. if you're if you're not that way and like I deal with this too, like <laughs> they don't care. Like if you're a dick, then you deserve it. Yeah. Well, tell you what, Lex. Um, I don't got a lot more baseball to talk, man. And I think that we hit a lot of great stuff in this conversation. This has been really fun. Yeah, sure. You had fun? Do it again. Yeah, of course. Hell yeah. And um so let's wrap this thing up. Um, where can people find you if they want to to interact with you in a way that's not stream sniping? They can't find me. I don't want to be found. All right, there it is. You can find him here on my <laughs> channel, uh, here on YouTube, and stalking my Twitch chat right here, twitch.tv slash DeekTV. I'm a supporter and a member and some other things that I don't exactly know what they are, but... I'm getting my hooks I'm sure deeper I'll, and deeper. I'm sure, I'll have a new I'll have a new role next week or tomorrow. We'll see. Yes, yes. As for me, I'm Deeg. This is my podcast. Every single week this month, I'll be hanging out with someone and talking about games. Um, actually, uh, next week I'll be talking to a fellow named Brazil. He is an infamous character from the Guild Wars Two community, and is known for being a bit of a uh, direct speaker himself. So. That'll be a fun conversation. Um, he's famously called out the developers of that game for coming short on a lot of things. Something, Lex, I think you can relate to. And uh, I think it'll be fun. Um, I got a lot more coming up. And uh, Deeg TV here on Twitch, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this live, YouTube, Deeg. And, uh, you know, do the things. You all know what you're supposed to do. That's it. Say bye, Lex. Goodbye. See you all.